Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Young Jamie, back in the fucking saddle. How you feeling? Very well, thank you. COVID free, four days in a row now. I've kicked it. Yeah, and now uh, you still can't taste anything? Can't taste, well, it's, you it's like a battery? to come back today, but yeah, like 5% taste. Yeah, it's got to be pickle so, juice. doesn't even taste like anything. Really? It just yeah. tastes like water? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Very weird. But you don't have any residual symptoms? No. Nothing wrong? All good. can breathe everything. You know. Good to see you back, O2. buddy. Good. We're a little worried about you. Thank it's you. a little worried about you. Not worried about you. Alex Jones. This is the most anticipated thing I ever did. I've probably had, no exaggeration, two or 3,000 people in the last year and a half ask me, when are you going back on Joe Rogan? And I'm always saying, I don't know, I don't know. And then I learned you were moving here like three, four months ago, and now we're here, and this is, this is exciting. I don't get uh, butterflies anymore, but I actually have them here, and this is, this is great. It's good to have, have butterflies after about 20 years. Didn't get it the last two times I was on. Didn't get it when I interviewed Trump. Didn't get it in a lot of things, but I've got butterflies here today. And... Tim, motherfucking Tim. Yeah, I'm just a kid in a candy store. Thank you. Thank you for making this dream come true. <laughs> this is what I've always wanted to do, and we've made it happen. This is my make a wish. I can die happy. Well, I'm happy you're here. Yeah, I got my Freeges Lane shirt because I believe all women. Is that how you say it? It's. I think so, yeah. I thought just it was Lane. Ghislaine. I thought it was it Ghislaine. It might be Ghislaine. It's Ghislaine. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Don't look at me. No, I'm. Ghislaine? It's Ghislaine. Ghislaine? That's a ridiculous name. Yeah. Her father was a, a famous uh, MI6 massage spy that reportedly used sex operatives to control people. He died being thrown off a yacht uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And, of course, she uh, got caught in that farmhouse on the East Coast. And she was really the pimp over Epstein in a giant sex network ring over scientists that they were compromising uh, so they could control not just government but industry and science. And so that was the master blackmail operation they were running. And her sisters are big in tech. Like Isabel Maxwell, they, she has sisters that are in U.S. tech companies. And I think two of her sisters uh, were part of the creation of Magellan, which was that big search engine. Like, really? So, yeah, they are a very powerful family, and they have all kinds of different operations. Yeah, her dad was the biggest publisher in England and, and also the biggest owner of private TV stations in England. And uh, when he died, it turned out he was a front basically for intelligence networks. Now, let me right off the bat say you were telling me about Epstein and this island years ago. You were telling me long before anybody. I think you told me about him before his first arrest. A long time ago, I talked about how they have these islands. They, they fly. They compromise children. But I learned all this from Ted Gunderson 20 plus years ago. He was in line to be the FBI director. He was the head of the FBI in Los Angeles. He was a very famous FBI uh, agent. He even ran COINTELPRO. It's a civil rights movement. He apologized for that before he died uh, in the 2011. But he came out, and he was the one that explained to me about how they use these, these blackmail rings, elements of the CIA, uh, and, and foreign intelligence groups, and, and how they would basically make people have sex with children to be part of these clubs and these cults they were setting up and so, so, so they, i knew about all this from ted gunderson were they young girls that did they tell them these girls were underage or did they look like they were older like like this uh the borat movie where they uh Julian. Trying to set Julian got, up. yeah <clears throat> if you haven't seen it it's very disappointing because they set him up i saw it yeah they did set him up but nothing happened they made it look like Giuliani was jerking off in front of this girl. He was taking which, his mic off. He would have to be the biggest savage on earth to, to do jerk that. off yeah. in that situation. Right. And they also said that he inappropriately touched her back. When he touched her back, I am not exaggerating, it was like this. Right. It was a couple of light taps on the back. While she was close to him, taking off his mic thing, he goes, oh, thank you very much, dear. And he goes, "Just I just need your name and your phone number. And then she takes off his mic, and then he leans back, and he's tucking... His shirt back because he just pulled the mic off. Right, but he's lying on the bed to do it. Now, right. if, if you're an old man, and I'm sure he's probably got a bad back, like that's probably how you would do it. But any of us that have had to put the mics on our side, and then you put it in your pants up your shirt, and then you've got it gets to be a, you've got to get it out. That's what you do. But but it, it's worse than that. Remember when he was playing the who was the gay character he played like ten years ago? Bruno. 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 Yeah. Remember Congressman Ron Paul at the time was had run for president. And he's in the hotel. He goes, oh, the light broke. Please step into this room. So there's no chair. Ron Paul sits down, and he's reading a newspaper. 
And uh, Bruno comes in and pulls his pants down and says, I want to have sex with you. Now, that would be sexual assault if that was a man to a woman. Right. Ron Paul pushes him out of the way, goes out of the room. And so this is what he does. He's done this to other people. It's his specialty is to say you're being interviewed. And this, yeah, yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me just, before we go any further, I fucking love Sasha Baron Cohen. He's a I comic love him. genius. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. I think yeah. he's amazing. But his interpretation of what happened in the room with Rudy Giuliani, it's, it's not accurate, in my opinion. Well, listen, go, I mean, in Who is America? Like, see, he's, yeah. he's tapping her while she's touching him and removing his mic. He does this little tap on her waist. But it's not creepy. It's like an old man, like a little tap, tap, tap. Right. Like, if, if you want to take it out of context, like, I don't know if there's more to it than but what But let's go seeing. further. Let's go further. Right after this happens, uh, Borat, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, runs in in panties and a bra saying, have sex with me, she's 15, she's too old. Yes. So this is, and, and Giuliani's like, what the, <laughs> I'd have a heart, like, what is this? Listen, my fucking 12-year-old sense of humor loved it. Yeah. But the thing about it is they're making it seem like Giuliani was jerking off in front of her. Yeah. And that's not, like, he lies back and he's tucking his pants. Like, if, if can we show the whole thing? So we can look at it. We don't have to. They put it out as promotional material. What's, I mean, that, what's that, Jamie? So we, we can watch it in here, but yeah. I'll be, I'll be. Well, let's just. No, I mean, I think Jamie's right because us. you're a big show. They'll try to tag you. Yeah. But they put this out as promotional material to be promoted. They put it out on Twitter. The clip is on Miss Pat's. Give a shout out to Miss Pat. I mean, Jamie's Comedian technically right, Pat though. On Instagram. It's on her uh, Instagram if you want to. But let me drop a bombshell on you, Joe. Okay. A bombshell? No, no. I've, I've been a big fan of Sasha Baron Cohen until I learned he spoke at the ADL last year. And called for my arrest for free speech. And he, he called for Jeff Zuckerberg's arrest, uh, or Mark Zuckerberg's arrest. So he called for my arrest and, and for Mark Zuckerberg's arrest for free speech. Hey, he wants to work in Hollywood. Right. You got to do what you got to do. No, but let's go further. Deals. Well, no, I agree. But I mean, he said arrest people for their free speech, and he supports internet censorship. So how does he make his money being this avant garde, cutting edge, really, uh, you know, over the edge? comic that does things that could technically be seen as illegal i support his free speech and then he says i don't deserve it well it's really dangerous he's flawed like many great artists yeah you know i mean i i'm until they come for him he's not going to understand the slippery slope of censorship and the, the, you know this is another thing that you know get to, yeah. people have uh people have criticized me for being friends with you and for talking to you and they also criticized me for not supporting a lot of these people that got uh banned and deplatformed my take on it has always been the best way to counter wrong speech is correct speech the, right. When someone says something that's wrong, or someone says a conspiracy theory that's not accurate, the best way to counter that is is to to do better speech, to to, to have yeah. people say the accurate information, and to let the truth rise to the top. When you start censoring people, the problem is it's a fucking slippery slope, and there's a reason why we've been so steadfast in supporting the First Amendment in this country. And people think it doesn't apply to tech because these tech institutes are private businesses and they should be able to do whatever they want with their private business. The problem is that fucking slippery slope has gone from censoring you from banning Alex Jones off Twitter a year and a half ago to getting the White House pre press secretary banned off Twitter because she posts something from the New York Post, which right. is crazy. It's crazy. It's cr that's a 200 and whatever year old America's newspaper. oldest newspaper. And the and what she said, the the post what the what they put printed and put out there is accurate. Well, yeah. let's go further. Let's go further. They're denying that that it's a real story, but they don't ever say the emails are fake. They just say it's a smear. No, it's a real laptop. The videos have been released. It's confirmed. And but just think about this. Well, it is a smear in that they're trying. They're putting it out there. They're they're timing it. Sure, but they're not denying. Make, but they're not denying it's real. No, it's real. It's real. But like, how did the laptop? How did this laptop become this big story? That's where it gets tricky. Yeah, I'm curious because supposedly he dropped it off at a in laptop Delaware. repair shop in Delaware. What but an idiot! Also, I mean, who's doing also, that? Well, a crackhead. Right. Right. The guy's Good doing, point. The guy's smoking. I crack. keep forgetting he smokes crack. Yeah, well, he yes. did at the time. Apparently, yes. he's kicked it. So, okay. congratulations to him. But. The, the the guy had some problems. Now right. this is self admitted, and and also and they have the receipts. And, and they here's the thing, 
he calls him dozens of times. The, the, cause everybody knows when you bring a laptop or anything in, they say, if you don't pay for this, we're going to wipe it and sell it. And so three months goes by, six months goes by. Nobody ever comes and gets it. The guy goes to look at it at the repair shop, the owner, and there's all these 25,000 files, what looks like underage girls, and all the rest of this crazy stuff and him smoking crack or God knows what. He gives it to the FBI. Ray does nothing. The director hides it from Trump. And so people, let's just say inside that had copies of that, they leak it to Rudolph Giuliani, who then now has started to put it out. So instead of instead of facing up to it, they just say anyone promoting this, whether it's the House or Senate committees that were linking to it, right. or the New York Post or the president's press secretary, you're now banned, which again shows it's it's election meddling. It's, it's, it's gatekeeping to cover this up. But I'll tell you what else has come out now. His daughter, Biden's daughter's, uh, uh, purportedly, reportedly, and they've not denied it now, this broke three days ago, left her diary in a house that she had rented. And the diary talks about all the same stuff and everything. <laughs> what and that the, is so what convenient. What the fuck is wrong with <laughs> this family? Will you jump in? Hold on a second. Hold, Wait, please. Hold Jamie? On. When I was looking into this, the thing I keep seeing people say is that he lived in California. He lived in California at the so time. Is that, yeah. that is true? That's what I keep reading. But they fly well. back and forth to Delaware. I mean, these, these are jet setters. They fly to Ukraine. Well, everywhere. that also might make sense. That that's why he didn't go back to Delaware to pick up the laptop. Because when you're cracked out in California, it's really hard to make the flight. <laughs> All right. Right? I don't know. Well, I, well, you, I mean, hold so, on. Tim is the only one here who's guys, probably guys, smoked the crack. the FBI I, confirms they have the laptop now. I will now. confirm it's not an easy flight coming down off cocaine or crack. Yeah. Have you smoked crack or just I've never free-based cocaine, which well, that's is- basically the Yeah, same. it's close. Yeah, how close is it? Not not as close as where I ever went and made shady deals in the Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> never, well, that's never the Never done thing. that. By the way, that's in the, emails, Biden... that's in the emails. That's in the emails. Finally, where it's like, yeah, I need thirty million. Part of it goes to the big guy. And they're like, okay, we want to meet with your dad. And there's photos of them meeting and playing golf. So let me tell you, this is real. The FBI has the files. They admit it's real. It's a big deal. But it's a real problem to ban this stuff what from Twitter. Part of it Putin rejects yesterday. Donald Trump's criticism of Biden family business. Well, because it's Russia's bribing Hunter Biden. Two, Three point five million through yeah. through Putin through the Moscow mayor who he's friends with to Hunter Biden again. Well, if I was Putin, I would deny it too. Listen, Putin has got to love this. If I was P P Putin sitting back, right. watching these fucking people eat themselves alive and destroy the First Amendment, destroy right. democracy, yeah, it's and great. I'm sure they have a hand in it. I'm sure China has a hand in it. I'm sure Iran has a hand yeah. in it. This is what the intelligence communities have been telling us for a long time now, is that it's not just one foreign company or foreign country that's trying to fuck with our democracy it's yeah multiple. the idea that the russians have a monopoly on this no I, I mean if the russians were an nfl football team they'd be like in the lower third and by I mean, the, the u.s and, and china are the top teams right and we right, should say right. we should say the united states does it too sure it's 100 percent confirmed the, sure, the states, idea that russians got trump in is asinine because here's what happens notice they tried to impeach trump just nine months ago for stuff in ukraine because whatever they are worried about they project Okay, so Trump doesn't have Russia connections. Trump doesn't have uh, uh, those connections. Trump doesn't have those outside connections. You can't buy him. He doesn't have lobbyists. The problem is he then has family and people around him that basically become lobbyists for themselves, and Trump isn't really even aware of it, and then that's going on. And I mean, even junior aides now. You'll find out have, have people given them millions of dollars just to say something to the president. Is this standard shit? Is this just stand, how politics have always been done? It's you, just now we're seeing it. Well, it, it was standard. Let's say two hundred years ago that you'd go out for the wife or the brother or or somebody that works at the White House. It got organized the last hundred years with lobbyists. Trump literally cut the lobbyist off, but all it did was now make everyone around him a lobbyist, so even though they're not officially cut, a lobbyist. How did right. he cut the lobbyists off? He just stopped meeting with them and stopped and, and just said, I want briefings on what's going on. I'll decide. So that's why he pissed official Washington off. Not that he's even perfect, but that he actually became the president sort of making decisions himself instead of having consortiums and lobbyists pay him for policy. That's why he says, Biden's raised more money than me. Of course, I can call up all these companies. They'll give me any money I, I want, but I've got to do what they say. But it would put him in a compromised position. Yes, but I'm being honest about it. The vacuum and, and, and the, the, the blind spot is that then everyone around him in his cabinet and everyone that works there, even down to mid-level people, are now getting multi-million dollar contracts for companies like AT&T and stuff just to just to, just to to even mention something to the now, president. Now, hold up. Before you go any further, you said AT&T. Has it been proven that it's AT&T, or are you just saying AT&T-like companies, like uh, let's large just say, companies? I'm not saying AT&T is bad. I think AT&T is overall a good so, company. But is AT&T doing something bad? 
No, I just I was mentioning that as a Fortune 500 company. Okay, but it's not AT and T. No, it's not AT and T. So we shouldn't say that. See, this is why you need someone that's like a fact checker, right? Well, next no, to you. I, no. Go the, and slow down. The, the media will say I'm wrong, right? About that, but okay, uh, okay, but but no, no. Hold on, his personal lawyer, his personal lawyer, the one that ended up going to jail. Actually, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was getting money from AT and T. Go ahead and pull it up. I okay. mean, I, I was just trying to give you a gestalt quick I analysis. I, I, but I just want to. I've told you before. What you really need on your show is like a, a legit journalist who's right next to you with a laptop, going, "Alex, hold on, hold on, just slow down." But I think you're right you about get, that because but in, you get so much right. But yeah. when you get something wrong, that's what but people. What you got to understand at, is AT and T confirms it paid Trump lawyer Michael Cohen's company. Yeah. No, I remember that. But see, Joe, yeah. they're, they're always saying that I'm making stuff right. up. They're lying. Right, right. right. Now, every yeah. once in a while, my memory used to be photographic, but from everything I've done, it's not as good as it used to be. It moves really quick, okay? So when I'm saying stuff, it's just d d data knowledge, okay? And, and then I can like, okay, yeah, did I say that? Yeah, it's real. Check it out. But I'm not trying to make stuff up. 99% of the time. Here it is. AT&T confirmed Tuesday evening that paid President Trump's personal loyal Michael Cohen in 2017 for, in quotes, insights into understanding the new administration. <laughs> <laughs> Insights. I love that. Um, so, how much did they pay him? Two hundred thousand bucks in four separate payments of fifty bucks in late two thousand seventeen, early two thousand eighteen. Interesting. Yeah, but he got paid. I think the number was ten million total mm. from a, a handful of companies. But look and by how the way, AT and T did it, it is, shady. Look, Avenatti alleged that Essential Consultants, a shell company set up by Cohen before the election to pay Stormy Daniels was paid by several corporations, including AT&T. At the time, AT&T was seeking government approval for its acquisition of Time Warner, CNN's parent company. It's a merger. It's yeah. a dirty world. Yeah. yeah, but I'm telling you, AT&T is a sweetheart compared to Google and Facebook and Twitter and all these people. So I wasn't attacking them. I was giving an example of how everyone in his entourage becomes a, a lobbyist because he thinks, I'll just cut lobbyists off. He's not taking any money. And, and, but then everyone around him becomes a lobbyist. That's what Do I'm you saying. worry about the influence that people like Jared Kushner have? Because I know that a lot of biggest uh, – his supporters, like Ann Coulter, who's Trump's biggest supporter, goes, I don't love the idea that he hired his children and that they have a lot of connections. I can to tell you this. Yeah. I can tell you this. People were really pissed who were patriots in the intelligence community – and in other areas, but also enemies of Trump that Kushner had so much influence. But now Kushner's gotten a lot of respect uh, because he's actually gotten a lot of huge peace deals done that nobody else could do for 50 years. And That's now interesting how little press those peace deals Yeah, have they're got. getting none. Yeah. No press. Yeah, it's really concerning. So so now, I mean, they were pissed like, who's this kid? And now everything he touches turns to gold. But he, he right. looks like the omen. We've covered this He looks like a little, little devilish. He looks like yeah. Damien. And he, he's paid, he's, he paid twice what it was worth for like 666 Park Avenue. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's not good. That's not great. Why would <laughs> That's he want not that? great. Why would he want that? Uh, I think it was more than twice. Look up 666. Is it Park Avenue? Or Listen, maybe, maybe he just thinks a, it's funny. Maybe he's a Satanist. He's getting good deals done in the Middle East. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's, he's, he's Lucif getting good deals. They say the Antichrist right. gets good deals in yeah. the Middle East. If right. you're going to be a Luciferian, at least make peace in the Middle East. Like, How a, about that? Maybe a, Satan's the only one that can do that. at and a really good cell phone company. Yeah. Right? Hey. Hey. It's the way it works. I mean, you want to... When I mentioned AT&T, it's an example that popped in my head of, of un un unofficial lobbying. Well, I was happy that we called you on it because then we found out it's correct yeah yeah look you've been correct about a lot of shit this is my point from jump i found out about agent provocateurs from you from your 9 11 road to, to tyranny video where they used them at the world yeah. trade organization protests in seattle in the late 90s like i had no idea that it was a common practice to send in masked people to start smashing things during peaceful protests right. so then they could go and by the in, way i can give you the straight dope on antifa if you want to do that Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. 666 Park <laughs> Avenue Project had been a black hole of cash for years until a sovereign wealth fund made a substantial investment for the property after Kushner was already serving as Trump's top advisor in the White House. Wow. Okay. Might be a nice building. Though. What does it say? The Kushner Company? Is that what his company's called? Yeah. The yeah, Kushner Company went to prison. Found himself. The Kushner Company's 666 Park Avenue Project. That's hilarious. I think that's beautiful. His dad went to prison for, I believe, setting up his brother with like a prostitute or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. 
What? Yeah, that's they're a fun family. The Kushners. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The yeah. dad the, set up the brother with a with a prostitute with a cold okay. girl and take we them are, to try we to entrap. Are step by step, we're gonna fact check everyone. No, no, this is well known. This is well known. I understand, but we need to have this for the people like me and Alex. Don't just spout off. We have the facts. I know you have the facts, but I want to make sure. Here, Chris Christie, Jared Kushner's father, committed one of the most loathsome, <laughs> disgusting crimes I prosecuted. Wow. Wow. Listen, we fact check all of that this. That is crazy. Make that bigger for my old eyes. Look at this. Where does it say? According to the excerpts in the book, Republics by Axios and The Guardian, Christie claims the younger Kushner was behind his departure from Trump's inner circle after the 2016 election, writing that he was still apparently seething over the events that had occurred a decade ago. Well, what is the events of a decade ago? They over prosecuted his dad. He should have gotten like uh, he should have gotten probation for trying to set up his brother with a hooker. Said he got That's, a bunch of time. Imagine yeah. your dad setting you up with a hooker. It's crazy. Well, he's trying here? to set the other family okay. member up. Here's here's what. Uh, yeah. If my father is guilty, I would. Mister Kutcher pled guilty. He admitted the crimes. Christie said. And so what am I supposed to do as a prosecutor? I mean, if a guy hires a prostitute to seduce, to seduce his brother-in-law. Oh, it's his brother-in-law. That's what he said. His brother-in-law. His brother-in-law. Okay. I, I got confused. And then videotapes it and then sends the videotape to his sister to attempt to intimidate her from testifying before a grand jury. Do I really need any more justification than that? Holy shit, But but, but it guy. wasn't to intimidate. That's his interpretation. Yeah. That stuff goes on divorces all the time. People go videotape the other person cheating. So was that's his, his why his it was brother. wrong. He went to prison because he wasn't doing it. He was doing that to show that the person testifying was wrong. Of course, you're trying to influence testimony with the truth. It's this idea that yes, they're, they're cheating. I told you they were. Here's the proof. How does that become fraud? Okay, I'm confused. So he set up his brother-in-law with a prostitute to so show that this was been going on before, which he'd already alleged. Okay, as part of the plot, Kushner hired a prostitute to lure Shoulder into having sex in a Bridgewater, New Jersey motel room. First of all, if you find yourself in a Bridgewater, New Jersey motel You're room, fucked. run. As the, hidden, <laughs> as, right. as, as the hidden camera rolls, a tape of the encounter was then sent to Kushner's sister and uh, Shoulders. Look, I know the Esther. whole story, so does, wow. just trust yeah. us. We try. We're, we're just, I just made a comment that you start thinking about like who's running the the, these stories and then Hunter Biden's running around with you know underage people on the laptop. You start going, why does everyone work for a Ukrainian gas company? Like, who are these people running the country? Yeah, the it's West controlled strange. Ukraine, so they just use that as 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 the money laundering op. It's not the Ukrainians running us. Right. They use it as that. But but let's expand on this, Joe. What I'm getting at here is I didn't bring up AT&T. They're a good company overall. They're not the ones censoring and stuff. Okay, it's the big tech. The reason I raised that was just the one that popped in my head, the first one. It's massive what's going on. I was just being honest that Trump's well, tried to- a couple hundred grand. Like, I mean, as much as that sounds like a lot of money- Yeah, but the bigger ones, like he's talking about Communist Google. China, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Communist China's yeah. even bigger. Okay. It's bigger than big tech. It literally spends hundreds of billions of dollars buying us off. It owns Hollywood. It owns a lot of the big telecoms. It owns the majority of our debt. And I've got articles in the LA Times and New York Times I brought for you where they say Xi Jinping must destroy Trump to save America. He was our leader. And then at the Davos group, he said three years ago, I will destroy Trump. I will work with Hollywood. I've got all his quotes right here. And Xi Jinping said, I want to overthrow American democracy. I want to repudiate it. I want to discredit it. And Xi Jinping admits he admires it's Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. Okay, but isn't he doing That's that? That's crazy. That seems crazy. Yeah, isn't, you can pull it up. I understand. I'll show you step by step here. Yep. Yeah. Isn't he doing that because of Trump's trade deals? Like the trade deals that Trump wants to do with China are not nearly well. They're not one sided for 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 him. Right. I mean, here's what happened: special interest in the U.S. went in and opened up China. Uh, you know, in the 70s, when the, most of them didn't have running water or electricity, they're hardworking, smart folks. But by one tr sided trade deals where we, th we have higher tariffs on them than they on us and all the rest of it, or vice versa, through those deals, they use the slave labor of China to then take over manufacturing worldwide. And so China's a client state of the globalist. And so now the Washington Post, the LA Times, the New York Times, I brought you the articles here. Dreams of Red Emperor, the relentless rise of Xi Jinping. And it says in these articles, he must destroy American Western Christian values. We love him and we accept China as our master. I have the goddamn articles. Right, but who's this saying is treason. Okay, the freaking dude right here. Washington Post. Uh, but who's uh, saying that quote? Who, who's that quote? Here, I'll give them to you. This is this is the Washington Post. And there's a huge article, L.A. Times. I understand. But the quote that you just said about he must destroy Trump. Just like I said, 
AT&T gave money unofficially lobbying and you pulled it up. I read the article. I'm not giving you the exact... I, I understand what you're saying. But what I'm, what I'm asking you is who you quoted someone, but who did you quote when you said that? I'm quoting from when I read these again this morning before I came here, right. what I remember, David Don Dury, Durley. Oh, that guy. And... and uh, this, this Chinese lady that works I think he's talking about the prevailing sentiment of what they feel they must do. I understand, do. but yeah. when you quote somebody, it's best to No, no, no. I, mean, yeah. I, I just said in these articles, right. well, look at the headline. Xi's choice, destroy Trump or save him from weakened America. I mean, okay. Xi right. needs to destroy Trump? The Chinese dictator needs to destroy our president? So do you think that they're doing that because yeah. Trump wants to change the trade deals with You know what China? Trump said? Trump didn't start a trade war. He ended our surrender. We have been surrendered for 40 years with China, where they don't take our goods, but we take all of theirs. And they manipulate their currency, but we haven't manipulated ours. Where we have carbon taxes that Obama put in to shut down over half our coal plants that are clean. And our electricity prices went up where you could not run a factory here competitively against China. So when Joe Biden says, we're going to cut off all the fossil fuels, not just fracking, right. if you did that, we wouldn't just go bankrupt. We'd starve to death. 75% of our power comes from fossil fuels. I understand. Let's st Step by step again. Okay. Are coal plants really clean? 100% clean. How is that possible? I'll tell you. Please. Okay, there's two different types of major power when they plants. Say, when he says clean coal, I roll my eyes every time. When Trump's like, clean coal, clean. Well, that's because the engine Amazing. is so damn good. Is it? I'll tell you. Please. They had old-fashioned coal plants. China doesn't have one scrubber or filter on their coal power plants. And China doesn't have clean burning coal. There's one place in the United States that has major deposits of coal that is such pure carbon. You don't even need scrubbers. Nothing comes out but carbon dioxide and water. Well, they know we know water's not bad, so they list carbon dioxide. People think it's monoxide. Just like in studies, if you say the scientific name of water, most people in Penn and Teller skits on the street will say ban dihydrogen monoxide. If you go out on the street, Joe Rogan, and ask 100 Austinites, D dihydrogen monoxide is everywhere. If you get too much of it, you can die, drowned. And most people will say, I want to ban dihydrogen monoxide. That's the scientific name of water. Same thing if you do the scientific name of salt. Sounds scary. Well, uh, so, so hydrogen monoxide is the bad one. Hydrogen dioxide is a good one. That's the life cycle. On Earth, there's, there's light, there's water, there's oxygen, and there's carbon dioxide. Those are the four things you've got to have for, for life. And so they've gotten people convinced to say coal is dirty. It puts out carbon dioxide and water vapor. And so until about the 70s, we were still burning dirty coal full of mercury, all of it. They found huge deposits of clean burning coal out west, enough in Utah to run the whole world for over a thousand years. Well, okay. what's the difference between the coal? Like, well, let me tell you. Let me okay, tell you. Please. One coal is so damn pure, and it's only in the United States in major deposits, that basically you don't even need to put scrubbers on it. But our scientists in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, because they realized that dirty coal has mercury in it, has all these horrible toxins, they put scrubbers on it. That's so when you drive by a coal plant, it's this big, huge buildings and wires and, 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 and hoses and big, huge steel. It looks like an alien spaceship. That's because it's called distillates. They know how to burn it and then take off all the chemicals, all the toxins, and make plastics and make chemicals and make pesticides and make everything else that comes out of that. And then out of the stack comes nothing but water. They have sensors on it. Nothing but water and carbon dioxide. Totally clean, totally pure. So, so that's what's going on. So carbon monoxide is what everybody's worried about. Carbon dioxide increasing in the environment has no negative effects? Well, let's talk about it. They've Please. done they've done ice core samples, okay, all over the, the Antarctic and the Arctic. They've done mud core samples uh, in, in all over the world, but m mainly in Siberia and, and Wales for some reason. Jamie, I hope you're Googling. I, I haven't got some decent stuff to pull up, but he's Go ahead. Yeah. better right now. So, 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 so what happens is... They, they can go back 20,000, 100,000, 200,000 years, at least in the ice, and they know that they've also done spectrometers into stone. They can scan it till it was there. Carbon dioxide was over 500 times stronger uh, in the time of the T-Rex, okay, in, in, the, right. in the Jurassic Age. That's why plants grew so fast. Things were so big. There was a higher oxygen level. Just like Mars lost its atmosphere, it used to have an ocean they've now gone and proven. It lost its atmosphere as a smaller planet, couldn't hold it. The truth is the Earth's losing its atmosphere. So what's crazy is we come right along at this time, pump up all of this juice and all this carbon that was produced on the surface with plants and animals that ran down in cracks into the Earth. We're now pumping out all that carbon saved from millions of years ago and actually terraforming the planet, putting more carbon dioxide in that we actually need right at this time, like aliens okay, figure but, this out but, or something. But hold, hold yeah. please, but hold, please. 
isn't carbon dioxide responsible for an increase in the temperature of the Earth? But they said that we would have a seven increase. They said that by 2013, all that L.A. would be flooded and New York would be flooded. All that's lies. Okay, but let, let's forget about what, what they what, said in the past. Mm -hmm. What they're saying now is that carbon dioxide increase is responsible for an increase in the temperature of the Earth. Which, which, which we hope it does. Because we hope it increases the temperature set, of the Earth? The last ice age... Hold up, but hold on. Joe, the Joe, increase the last of the age, temperature... Listen, listen. But the increase in the temperature of the Earth is responsible for the increase in hurricanes, the frequency and the power of the hurricanes. If you look up this, the spectrum, in the last hundred years, hurricanes have gotten weaker. That's all media hype. But, but let me just tell you. Oh, Jesus. Joe, 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 I swear to God. I swear to God I can prove all this to you. This is so huge for your mm. audience. Are you a carbon dioxide salesman? Listen, well, they always say I'm getting money from oil companies. I'm not. But can I please tell you what's going on? Yes, please do. You are a carbon-based life form. Let me show you what I came here with in my notes. I have right here in my notes the carbon conspiracy. And that is specifically what I wanted to get into here with you in my notes because this is everything are you a climate change denier well see see imagine imagine how that's how they use that term right are you a climate change denier it's like a 9-11 denier right no the towers got blown up our government had prior warning and had been funding al-qaeda and all that came out later in senate reports and the 28 pages let's not go there just now because we're going to go down a rabbit well, that, hole that's true but let's go to carbon i yeah. that, that i agree with you there okay what are you what is what is what is what is joe rogan made up out of carbon Okay. Carbon-based life form. What are, we are literally stardust. What That's are a song, right? Exactly. What are trees made out of? Um, tree stuff. Carbon. Carbon. Yeah, but carbon-based life forms. It's most the whole on planet. The planet. And so th this is the carbon cycle. This is right. in the mainline textbooks. I understand. So 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 just like they 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 come out and assault reality now and say a little boy is biologically a girl. I don't care if he grows up wants to be a say he's Again, a girl. Rabbit hole. Let's not go down these. But I'm saying holes. it's not science. They go the science is settled. There's not two genders. Okay. Be okay. fucking okay. s. Okay, hold on. Let's not go down that road. We, we, you want to go down that road no, in no, the future? No, no, we will. No, no, right I'll, now, I'll do it. I'll do it. Let I me tell want, you. I want you to talk about carbon. I know. I don't want to get off track here I will, because. I'll, isn't there a delicate balance with the temperature on Earth and the rising sea levels and the melting of the ice caps? This has all been established by a lot no, of they very say, They say the science is settled, it's not. But very concerned environmentalists have said that an increase in the temperature of the Earth could be disastrous it's for power human grab. civilization. It's a power grab. Are you sure it's a power grab? I am absolutely freaking But how do, you, how do you know that it's not all... How do you know that... Because they're arrogant and they've all written white papers on it that I've read that I can give you. W white papers? Yeah, it's not what you see in the news. They're called white papers. And Joe, just like Joe, I this is why people get banned from the internet. This, this, these kind of conversations. Uh, we better ban it right now. When, let's not ban it. I'm just. Let's not. I'll throw that out. Let's, let's just not. certainly not ban the, the Tim listen, Allen listen, YouTube listen, page. Which let me is tell you the story. Fantastic, by the way. What your YouTube page? Thank you. Let me tell you this right now. It'll be up for another. They have hours. called in the European Union for the arrest of scientists that question the cause of anthropogenic warming or if it's man-made. Okay, but there is a contributing factor. Scientifically, it's been proven that increased carbon dioxide has an effect on the temperature of the Earth. Do you agree with that? It depends on the models they use. Sometimes, actually, more carbon dioxide can cause a cooling effect, but generally could cause a heating effect. It depends on potash in the atmosphere, volcanic uh, ejections at the time, and also solar maximum and minium, um, but minimums. If you, if you had, Sunspot activity is the main generator of planetary climate. But the wide, if you had a, a, a giant swath of scientists that are examining carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, would you agree that the majority of them believe that it's a contributing factor to Joe, the warming of the Joe, Earth? Joe, it's a mantra where they say the majority of scientists agree that climate change is caused by humans. I agree with climate change. The only thing that's constant is change. Of course the climate's changing. What I'm telling you is carbon dioxide was 50 to 500 times, depending on the time period, higher millions of years ago yes, than it is now. Right, but that's but you also realize that that was what before do you think, we got hit this by might an be asteroid. Interesting to hear. What do you think the motivation is for them to present the evidence in this way? Like you said, this is a fraud and everything. What, because I, I've heard you talk about this before, um, what do you think their goal is by linking all of this climate change to man-made activity? What's the goal? 
The goal is a centralized world government that can then monitor all carbon and control it as a toxic bad thing. Your carbon, it makes you bad. That didn't work, so now it's, oh, you have okay. a cold, you're dirty with COVID. We've got to track you but and hold. tax you and control you. So the new thing is COVID to cut the carbon okay, footprint, hold, and they hold, admit that. Before we go down the COVID rabbit hole. The, Same this, thing, the environmentalists are not in bed with the industrialists. The environmentalists are, are they're not in bed with all these people that think that they can control the, the world. Actually, BP and ExxonMobil and others are the biggest funders of the climate change movement. They're the biggest funders of it? Contrary to what you hear. How so? All right, Joe, here's the thing. I understand this is, and you're a smart guy. And I understand you want to go over each piece of this. Let's go through. Yeah, well, we have to. We have to. I agree. Let's go through each piece. But, but understand. You understand that the way you talk, and I enjoy the way you talk. It's fast. But the way you talk is fast, and you go on these long tangents, and then you go to frogs being gay, and you, a lot of things happen. I want to and do people it. people can, because I'm putting a record it. out. Yes, but I want to do it step by step. All right, let's do this. Let's so, do this. Let's but, do this. But most people, the vast majority, here we got here, BP commits $100 million to fund new emissions reductions projects. But let me just go back for a second. Okay. And I appreciate you backing me up. Yes. Let, let, let me break down. Are frogs gay? <laughs> you want to get to the frog stuff now? <laughs> we will. Connect it all. That is, by the Why way. Why do I feel like I'm stoned and I haven't smoked any pot? Yeah. I, I wish <laughs> if I he's stoned. not going to smoke it, I'm going to. Oh, gonna God. Sp- it's sober October. I have six Break days Break the left. goddamn rule I and then go an extra day. I cannot. I cannot. I'm like George Washington. Well, hey, on election night, we're going to get hammered, right? Mm-hmm. Election night, I'm getting hammered. But you, you're, Guaranteed. I'm going to pop in. You're, you'll, you can pop in. But we've told everybody now that we're doing a live. No, election no, no, night we're not. Kyle, we're not. yeah, Kyle Kalinsky, that's Tim Dillon, yeah, me, Alex Jones, going to pop in it's live. Gonna, it's going to be fun. It's live. So while you're watching the world yeah. burn, <laughs> live. Yeah. All right, Joe. Here's we're the here's here. the thing. <laughs> it's just like. Let me explain it to you because I love you, and dude. It's just like when you said, "What's the AT and T deal?" And I went, "Oh, look it up." But 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 listen, we did look it up, and we found this some is information. bigger. This is bigger. Okay. okay, let me let me get my brain focused here for a minute. Let me please, just try to explain please it. Do. I've literally interviewed probably let's not exaggerate two hundred top scientists from petroleum geologists to astrophysicists to astronauts to quantum mechanics to yeah, petroleum. Buckle up because I have two. I know. I'm a moron. I know. Okay. You're a moron? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, trust me. Joe, you're a smart guy, and I'm a, that's his cover. Mm-hmm. He is smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, yeah, right. I'm a smart moron. Yeah, right. Okay, let me tell you what's going on. I'm going to say it again. You can go to any major study. Just type in carbon dioxide levels were hundreds of times higher in Earth's early past. Well, I understand that, but also I understand but, that whoa, there was the- wait, wait, wait. You can look at the ocean models then. Yes. You can look at the ocean models, right? And it's true the oceans did cover more yeah, than they Alex know. Jones, human beings weren't alive sixty-five million years ago, and it, the environment wasn't compatible for us. We put out a fraction. Well, we hadn't developed yet. Right. We, well, we were moles. We had yeah, yeah, yeah but shrews, shrews. Yeah. But my point is, you're right. Yeah. Is sure. that is that? Last time CO two was this high, humans didn't exist. The last time there was as much carbon dioxide. CO2 in the earth. CO2 levels are far higher now than they have been for any time during the past. And oil, a single CO2 molecule can re- remain in the atmosphere. What'd you do? I, that was just parts of it. Oh, I see. I understand. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so let's let's just go to what this says. And what is this uh, paper that's, uh, is this uh, climate? Central.org. Okay. The last time there was this much carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere, modern humans didn't exist. Mega two sharks prowled the oceans, blah, blah, blah. All right. We, as we near the record for the highest CO2 concentrations in human history, 400 parts per million, climate scientists worry about what, where, about, excuse me, about where we were then and where we're rapidly headed now, according to the data gathered by Mauna Loa, Observatory in Hawaii, dope spot. The 400 ppm mark may briefly be exceeded this month when CO2 typically hits a seasonal peak. Sure, and I've had top scientists on. I've had climatologists on about the Keeling curve. I can tell you all this. Threshold, according to Ralph Keeling, the researcher. Carbon dioxide is the most important long-lived global warming gas. And once it's emitted by burning fossil fuels. It helps us keep our atmosphere. Hold, please. Hold, please. 
once it's emitted by burning fossil fuels such as coal and oil, a single CO2 molecule can remain in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. Global CO2 emissions reached a record high of 35.6 billion tons in 2002, to, excuse me, 2012, up 2.6% 2 from 2011. Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases warm the planet by absorbing the sun's energy and preventing heat from escaping back into space, which means it enhances the atmosphere, right? But the sea levels didn't go up like they said. Well, aren't they melting? Aren't, but it's a process. Al Gore said by 2013. Al Gore. Oh, okay, Joe, but listen, this is one guy's take. I know, I've but read Al the Gore's out there flying around. I know, I know. Jet. You found a guy admitting that it used to be higher than it is now. I'm telling you, it used to be way higher than it is now. This is, right, it, but then the, the asteroid hit the Yucatan, killed all the dinosaurs, and changed the entire atmosphere of the, I don't wanna, of the planet. With a dark winter. Yeah, which it was, was very bad for everything. Caused right? by for, atmospheric dust. For a long fucking time, right? Uh, one major volcano, like Mount St. Helens, they estimated, put out more dust than decades of human uh, dust. Yes. And, and, and human dust is what helps cause nuclei to form to cause storms. So we are affecting our environment. But most of the astrophysicists and most of the physicists I've talked to and most of the climatologists I've talked to, they have, have broken down that the sun, by magnitude, is 98% of the driver of what happens. That's why when the sunspots take place, that's an a, a eronal ejection from the sun, and one of those shoots radiation in our direction, it'll be clear blue sky, but, but they know when we get hit by that, it hits our magnetic field and causes an ionization of the atmosphere and electrification of it, and so that causes the giant storms. So the main driver of climate is the sun. And I think everybody, doesn't it be a scientist to know, what's the main thing that Earth's living off of? The sun. The sun. And so, and so they're telling us that carbon dioxide does this. What happens is, is carbon dioxide goes up, they said can be in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. It's normally absorbed by plants immediately, who they've got studies. They have found giant crocodile skeletons from just 10,000 years ago in the central Sahara. When hundreds of square miles is, is nothing but dunes. 10,000 years ago, it was it was lush jungles and beautiful, but they had goats and they ate all of the plants. And well, there's killed also the, the younger Dryas theory of asteroid impacts that they think ended the ice age. 12,000 years ago. Yeah, 10, well, two impacts. I believe there's 12 and then somewhere between But the answer is we don't know. And, and, and so they've now looked at all these big models saying that it's all carbon dioxide and it's not. It's the sun. It's asteroids. It's tectonic. It's electromagnetic from the Earth's core. I understand all this, but isn't CO2 emissions the one thing that we can control? So human-created global warming gases like CO2 emissions, if we can put a cap on that, wouldn't you agree? Let me ask you a question. If we don't, but if we continue to put that stuff in the atmosphere and it continues to get higher and higher and higher levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, wouldn't it's that... Just gonna make, it's going to make... It, the studies show it's going to make deserts become green again and plants are going to absorb the carbon. What studies are these? You can look them up. Okay, let's find out. And that's Which, why the left even says... One? But if you're going to say something like that, and I, I'm not arguing with you, but if you are going to say something like that, that's, that's a very bold thing to say. You should probably... Not just say look them up. There should be something. No, let's point type it to. in. Let's type it in. There's hundreds of them. I, mean, I, I, I like actually brought like over 50 you, articles right here. Do you have something that you've read that makes you so confident that you can say this? Uh, I actually know what 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 the plant studies show. Where in greenhouses they grow plants with higher higher carbon dioxide, and plants can grow up to three times faster. They live longer. Of course, plants live. Let's expand off carbon dioxide. And what do they put out more? Oxygen. Well, this one thing that has been proven is that there's more plants now than there have been in a long fucking time. There's a global because, greening happening, yes. countering us losing our atmosphere up until this point. The but earth has less atmosphere than it did a million years ago, and it's like God did this or something where we discovered all this oil, or it's just blind luck that we are terraforming the planet back to an earlier, healthier state by taking ancient carbon that was under the ground and putting it back into the atmosphere. But isn't the problem that along the way we're also increasing the temperature of the planet and we are not aligned with a higher temperature? You can, here's, here's the temperature truth. We don't know. Exists. We don't know. But in 1963, the Club of Rome came up with a limits to growth plan. And they had models and actuaries. And I have copies of this in my film Endgame. Seminal film. It's free online. Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement predicts a virus released to lock things down. Everything's now happening because it's in their own documents. And... In, in the 1963 Limits to Growth Club of Rome plan, they said, we believe there'll be a global ice age by 2020 because the last ice age ended about 12,000 years ago and we're set for that. We're going to tell the public that actually carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is bouncing 
solar radiation off the Earth because we've seen volcanoes cause this darkening effect in freezing. So we believe, our scientists believe, that carbon dioxide is going to make the Earth freeze by 2020. And so we've got to have a global regime to take control of all the factories and all the energy and put a tax in for global government in the name of stopping the Ice Age. Then by about 1987, they went, actually, we think it's going to heat up instead. So they flipped the, the, the propaganda. Ask anybody you know. Okay, but don't you understand that science back then didn't have as much data as they have now. So their their models and what they had predicted in 1963 is faulty compared to the information they have in Yeah, just like Fauci said, 2.5 million would be dead but again, uh, but again, from, from COVID. It was 200 some is, thousand. But worldwide, what is it? Uh, worldwide, uh, tuberculosis killed 20 million people, 1.4 million COVID, here last year, but nobody COVID cares. Killed? Yeah. Well, COVID killed a lot uh, of COVID's people. COVID's not even killed a million worldwide. What? Not even a million worldwide. Uh, no. Is that true? Yep. Come on. Yep. Well, how do we know? Oh, we use UN models. Again, they're our, they're our boss. Since when did the WHO say the lockdown has to go on? Now they go, oh, we're against the lockdown. Your nation states that it's their fault because they know millions are starving to death that from is, the lockdown. That is true and very yes. underreported yeah. that the WHO has now come out against lockdown saying that the reaction can't be a worse effect than the actual disease So, so let me back Alex up with the climate change. Please. It's like they're... There, there's certainly, you know, we're contributing to man-made global warming. But also, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? I don't know. What's you going know? on? I mean, that's another the question. It's like, what are we going to do? Why does his mic sound weird? Is it he's, he's hot? Is he on it? Or is it how I'm hearing it? I'm hearing like a breakup of his mic. Sounds good to me. It Sounds does? fine to me, yeah. That's weird. Okay. I'm sorry. It must be me. Jamie's really low. You sound great. He sounds good. Yeah. Okay. What is the climate control? Because that's very interesting. Like the idea of using climate to con – because as you said with COVID, and we talked about this, we give up a lot of rights, right, in the name of coronavirus. Exactly. What it, what yeah. it's, look, there's real issues. We don't really know what's going on. They want to be able to track all carbon and tax it with a AI surveillance grid with a social credit score over it. Yeah. And they admit all of that. That's yeah. Joe, they tell us what okay, they're going to do. I understand that. But you do you understand that the environmentalists who are concerned are not the there's a, a giant amount of them that are legitimately concerned that we're ruining the yes, earth. Yes, I understand car, the greenhouse the effect. Fossil fuels. I understand the greenhouse effect. But these people, the reason why they're acting, the reason why they're trying to get people on electric cars and trying to get people off <laughs> of fossil fuels, hold it, please. They're, they're legitimately concerned. Like, I don't believe that these actual environmentalists sure, are Sure, I agree with you, but I mean, here's the deal. Conspiracy. The new Hummer looks the new Hummer looks badass. Here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. But I'm not getting one because I don't want to contribute to global warming. Did I mean, sir, You don't want to contribute to global warming? Listen, be serious. Did you know, did you know that on average more carbon is spent for electricity into a car than 93 octane gasoline? Well, I would believe that because I would think it, would, it, it it takes a lot to make a fucking electric car. But once uh, the car is uh, oh, made... No, no, no. That's, no, no, no. Transmission lines. You lose up to half of transmission, and most of it's coal-powered, brother. So most per, of the electricity... Per megawatt, it's, mo it's more. So electric when I'm <laughs> plugging my Tesla in, and I think... Because that's how I like to think. I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm plugging my Tesla in. I'm helping save the world. I'm not because I'm contributing to power. No, you're driving. You're contributing to re putting putting carbon dioxide back in and oxygen and re-terraforming the planet. You're doing a badass job. The okay. biggest energy guzzlers, electric cars, are badass. They are putting out more carbon than anybody. Yeah, they don't come out the tailpipe. <laughs> they come out the power plant top. Woo! Okay, but what about I love electric cars. Carbon. Listen. Yeah, team carbon. Carbon. How do you carbon. feel about carbon? Okay. How do you feel about nuclear power? Power. I absolutely hate it. Why do you hate it? Isn't it clean? <laughs> 94. Joe, I'm not trying to tear you up. Don't tear me up. I don't know anything. I no, told no, you no more. No, 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 no. I used to be for nuclear power. Oh, what happened? Uh, I actually re did research. What research did you do? Um, they're always saying it's totally clean, no problem. But then you can look at the UN zone numbers, which I believe, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Look this up, CBS News. 94% of nuclear plants are leaking at dangerous levels. Look okay. this up. Pause. Hey. Jamie, 94% of nuclear power plants are leaking at dangerous levels. Isn't the problem that we're using old tech like yeah. Fukushima? Oh, now you see you're smart. Yes. And I'm just, you always know everything, Joe. The average power plant age is 36 years. Almost all these power plants, are the life is 20 to 35 years. Like, Fukushima was already a decade older than it was supposed to be a general electric model. 
using plutonium. Radioactive leaks found at 75% of U.S. nuke sites. Yeah, it's worse than that. It's 94%. Okay, well, that's not that's not good. <laughs> I don't know why 94 doesn't pop up. That's in the U.S. report. But wouldn't it be possible with innovation that they currently have access to? Yes, to yes, make yes. But I, you talk about corrupt companies. I don't tr th 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 listen. If people actually ran these right, and the, the executives, here's an example, BP. I think oil's great. It has toxic problems. We should clean it up. We should find alternatives. There's all sorts of clean energy we should go to that you know isn't. Solar's great, whatever. They've got fission, fusion, a bunch of stuff coming down. Take one of the best films out there because it's so accurate because I had lawyers on from the – I read the transcript of the trial. The uh, Event Horizon with, with BP. They literally have all these degreed engineers out there, and BP – calls them up from England to Houston and says, you're spending $25 million a day on this super deep experimental whale. We've decided to not pour concrete, they call it mud, in on top of this. The executives say we'll save $25 million a day if you dump water. And all the engineers went, we have mathematical equations, just like water boils at a certain amount. Okay, or we have a certain number of chromosomes. This is fact. Yeah. And they, on record, go, you're fired if you don't. Order them to dump water into it. So they follow the order, dump water in for five days, and it blows up because water didn't have enough pressure to hold what was going to be coming out when they finally hit that giant oil and gas deposit down there at 20,000 feet under the ground or whatever it was. Super deep well. It was deeper than that. So you, you, you watch that movie with Kirk Russell and the rest of it and uh, you know Marky Mark. Wasn't Event Horizon the one where they, they find... The I'm sorry, Event Horizon's where they go... Yeah, it's a, Event Horizon is a spaceship. Yeah, that's, that's the one I'm sorry. Space. Space. They they go, see, I'm see, trying to remember oil, oil in and and Event they, Horizon. I'm like, wait a minute. Lawrence what? Fishburne, right? Here's yeah, my, I think. They go to hell. Here's Some, my, here's my yeah. brain. Deepwater Deep Horizon. Deepwater Horizon. Yeah, pull up okay. Event Horizon because that's a great fucking movie. I love that movie. It's like that's they go great, into yeah, hell. It's a good they one. go into New it's Dimension. A good one. Also Sam, about BP. But see how my Sam. brain got that wrong? But it was not on purpose. No, it's okay. Event. That's the shit. He pulls his eyeballs out. He tells everybody. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. That's a great fucking movie. Pure evil. But listen, that's, I'm not trying to rant here. What I'm telling you, Joe, it. is it's the same thing with nuclear power plants. Why would the executives at BP? order their engineers to do something that was going to blow up. They just said, you engineers are full of crap. Do you We're going to make they money. they might just be arrogant engineers on Adderall and they made a big mistake? Well, no, no. Yeah, that's what Could happened. Could be. Could be. That's what happened. That is what happened? Well, well, those guys are probably tweaked out, right? Those those executives. But I'm saying it wasn't engineers. It was the executives. Yeah, but executives. That's what I'm saying. Why do you think they were like, keep pouring water in it, keep pouring water in it? Because they were insane. Right. I okay. mean, that's what I'm saying about okay. these nuclear... So the engineers are at the mercy of these executives who don't have the degrees the engineers have, and they made a, a crucial error, and they forced the engineers to do something that was ultimately... And so I was agreeing with you about we should listen to scientists and engineers. I, I was just going back to your point that, that, yeah, we don't know about the warming. We don't know what it's doing. The models they all use on warming... Oh, it, factor out the sun right and you can't factor out the sun in an equation i've had other scientists that factor the sun in and and they and they think despite all we're doing that within the next 200 years we're going to a very serious deep ice age i think alex's point is that in all of these things there are legitimate things you know covid has there there are real things people are getting sick global warming you know to an extent i'm sure is is happening of course it's happening but then there are also nefarious characters that want to use that to take away your freedom there are people that don't want you owning a car they there's all these legacy systems whitney webb who's a journalist who came on my show said a lot of people didn't want to reopen the economy until they remade the economy and got rid of all these legacy systems like and this is a doc with eric schmidt who was the head of google and you could look it up and they were saying you know they were considering these legacy systems like cash private ownership of cars you know, things like that, like getting rid of all of these things that are, are distinctly American ways of life and just saying that, like, we don't want you to own a car. We this might is not the most important thing that's been said here today. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, it's in my notes. That's why I'm here. One, one step yeah. at a time, though. Why would they want to get rid of private ownership of cars? Because they want control of people. And if you allow them to drive their own cars and use cash and run their own businesses and live in their own okay, homes. But let's start with yes. cars. Vertical integration. Let's start with yeah. cars. Don't you think that maybe the concern is they're looking at the future of autonomous vehicles, which would drastically lower the mortality rate on highways? And they're saying, I mean, are they concerned? Are the people that run this country, Joe, concerned with the mortality rate? I mean, they're bombing other countries. They're doing this. Okay, they're doing stop, that. Stop, stop, they stop. want Come centralized on. control. Hold, hold please. We're, we're Steve Wozniak, the former, uh, the founder of stop, Apple, stop. Hold, says the best AI is not thought. as good as an ant's brain. Hold this thought. Yeah, but hold this thought. The mortality but rate on highways. Listen, you can't think these that people the are in people, the woods with hoods on, but the people would 
at, at Google that are working on autonomous vehicles. Yeah. They're not the same people that are trying to control governments all outside but the it's world. All, but it's controlled by those guys. People. All of those people at Google want to usher in uh, a, the, you know, a brave new world. They want to remake uh, the world in, in the but way that they want to. all these people, some of them are just writing software to some make a better picture. Sure. Hey, Joe, some of them are. There's I wrote, a lot of them that are not, Joe. Joe I, wrote I feel notes. like I'm the fucking they're voice you, of reason. They, you're How not, is this possible? They're Joe, the tech you know why? utopians. I'm not high. They're I should be high. I'd be right along with you. Yeah, you're very combative. Joe? These are utopians. They want to create a, Joe, a, a paradise on Earth. Joe, I brought you. Through control. I brought I'm you the sucking, documents, Joe. The, I'm we sucking have on the, the cigar. Joe, we have the documents. I'm, I'm sucking on the cigar like it's a jelly donut. I'm hoping I can get to the weed <laughs> on the inside. Hey, Joe. I'm like, I'm licking the outside. What do you got there? A piece of paper? Take it. <laughs> what, is, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? I think it's confirming Looking what I just said. Looking forward to the end of humanity. Well, what is this? See? Okay, but it's a person who wrote this. It's Adam Kirsch. He's probably got a pistol in his mouth right now. No, right. That's, that's Sorry, the Wall Adam, Street Journal cover story. I don't really mean that, Adam. I apologize. That's the, that's the Wall Street Journal cover story. May I please tell you what I came here for? You came here for a reason? Yes. Hold on. Here it is. COVID-19 has spotlighted the promise and peril of transhumanism, the idea of using technology to overcome sickness, aging, and death. Okay, but what is he saying? I used to fall asleep every night listening to Alex talk about this, so I want to let Alex talk about this. Until they took him off YouTube. Okay, but make this He was the way I fell asleep every night. Not only did they do that, but do you know they they, they fucking took a Young Turks podcast, Young Turks podcast Let's yesterday Let's talk about that in a minute. Can I please? Can we get some weed in the Progressive. I w yeah, we can get some. We got some on the outside. No, you need it. No, I can't. If I blow it at you, like you got a cat high? Yeah, yeah. Is that not cheated if I blow it your face? I can't do it. I'll blow it your face. I can't do it. Listen. I'm getting kind of high from the cigar. Well, you, you listen. I need to talk to you. I'm a little lightheaded. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some apple juice, and I'm gonna pray to Jesus. We got some in here. Listen, I listen. I need to talk to you. There's, Just there, go, go yeah, grab, you, yeah, Just him, go grab some bottles and some ice. Get him some apple juice for the transhumanism discussion, please. Listen, listen. You want to know why I'm so crazy? No. Because I discovered this stuff uh, right out of mainline documents, and I've known it for 26 years, 27 years. Well, here's another thing. Let me tell you something. I like. We we all know that you've fucked some things up, right? And the, your biggest fuck up is Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. But you've gotten so many things right. And this is why I keep talking to you about these things and why I defend you and why I think that it's fucking dangerous to censor you and to say, oh, this guy, we need to get him deplatformed and get sure. him all these things. You're revealing some things that have been proven on this show so far to be true that make people very uncomfortable. Well, the first thing I was going to do was thank but, you for having was, me on and having the courage. But I was going to say the, the fucking Bohemian Grove thing. The Bohemian Grove thing. That which, was a that was the first time I really got into what he was doing, and that was like amazing. I mean, when you watch that movie, watch that, yes. you know, it's it's paradigm shift. I've had people this try to yeah. minimize that. I've had people try yes, to. they all do. I go, listen to me. I'm not a billionaire. Well, well I'll give you the real take on it because I've been there, and I, and I think it's just a gateway to things. But let's get into Bohemian Grove in a moment. I really want to give you. I, I want to give you the big enchilada. The big enchilada. Okay. Yeah. Just, just like have mole sauce. Yes, sir. Just like I'm. I love mole sauce. I do too. Just like I'm saying, the engineers and uh, meanwhile, a lot of them have good points. I'm not saying they're wrong about all this stuff. I'm simply telling you, I've read what the globalists have to say in their own establishment communication. Okay. And I have it right here in my notes to talk to you about the post-human era. And the system that they are setting up, where in all of their main publications they say humans are flawed, humans are bad. But they are. But they are flawed, right? But, but then and these corporations are saying they're going to take us out of our bodies and make us silicon. And that's mm -hmm. what Elon Musk talks about. Beware of those that worship AI gods. Well, he's actually talking about Neuralink, which is something where they're going to be able to interface with your brain and increase the bandwidth in which you access information. But go ahead. Well, that's it. And but so, that's, it seems inevitable, doesn't it? No, it's not inevitable. Already, driverless cars don't know a wreck up ahead or what to do. They have more accidents. Steve Wozniak, as I was saying earlier, the founder of uh, co-founder of Apple, says the best AI isn't a million percent, you know, close to how good an ant's brain right. is. Stop! Stop! A stop! 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 When they first developed cars, they said, "Well, how are you going to take them? There's no roads." Sure, AI they power built roads. Here's the but deal. Do you understand that the AI that's powering these cars now? Is not Do as you understand good. the people Hopefully. running the AI are predatory anti-humans that okay, say they want to get rid of Musk us? Elon Musk is not a predatory anti-human. No, I didn't say he was. But, but I understand he's working on I, autonomous vehicles. He said, beware those that speak of AI gods. Yes. Okay, a lot Be of people are worried 
that a, look, Elon right. is more concerned. Don't give me one of those. You keep that shit away from me, motherfucker. No, 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 no. He doesn't I, drink. I'm good, thank you. I He's sober. It. Hey, Rogan, Look at all this extra. I'm, as, fucking... I, I'm sitting next to Alex Jones. I'm as high as Elec I can be. Election night. Okay, but listen, listen. Election night, we're gonna get lit. But <laughs> these guys who are making this it's like stuff, in Hollywood. This is fake. This is only uh, corn syrup coloring. Do you think this is a good idea, though, this idea that we should be expanding our minds in this way and putting I, chips in I our... I don't think it's good or bad. I think it okay. is the nature of human innovation. I think we take things, hey, Joe, we improve upon them, we, we do that f with everything. We, but at what point do you at cross one a point, line? Joe, you're talking about... One point, can I please, please tell you? No, one at a time. At he's, one point he's time, weed. There was... Dee -dee 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 -dee. They had Morse code, right? Yes. They went from Morse code to you being able to send me uh, a FaceTime video. Understood. And, and, well, these things happen. Hey, Joe, this we're is not just against part technology. of being humans. We're not against technology. But, uh, okay, I, I understand say something? that you're not against technology, but what I'm saying is if you follow technological innovation, it becomes better and better and more and more invasive. We and need to design it where it doesn't make us obsolete. Humans take control of their environment. We build our environment. The globalists have decided to have a post-human future where humans this are no longer you, relevant. This is where you lose. I can you show you their damn quotes. He's, but I'm, he's getting me because I, I just <laughs> gave you an article. I just gave you an article you, where they said it. Me. Because I think he's right. I think the only reason we're okay. still around is because they haven't figured out how to get robots good enough to this, get rid of all of it. If... They had the right robots. There would be no Walmarts exactly. to get rid of everybody. You you don't think that? If there were the right robots, the they'd right get rid of AI, they're making us yeah. obsolete. They're making I, us they're obsolete. They're trying to get rid of the Walmart. Danger, 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 danger. I need danger, a danger, fucking danger. cooler. I like to go to Walmart. Is that okay? N not, but once you have a robot, you won't want to go to Walmart. Why? Because it's 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 dirty. It's filthy. Everyone's no. got COVID. I listen to yeah, music. That's why they're doing I the COVID. Is the post human? Car. You're not essential under COVID. They listen. They not want, essential. They want to train you. Okay, listen. Look, look how calculators were great. No one knows how to do math now. Look how phones are great. No one knows their numbers anymore. All the statistics show that the science and technology is making us dumb. And that's why they wrote the big article, the co-owner of Sun Microsystems, in 2000. Bill Joy wrote, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And he explains he went to a top billionaire tech conference, and they made the decision to not let humans sit around and play video games into the future, that they were just going to slowly phase us out and kill everybody. <laughs> Stop. They're not trying to kill us. Okay, everybody. pull up Why the Future why, Doesn't Need but, Us. But, but listen, why, why would, do you think why they're trying to kill they? everybody? But why wouldn't they? Can we reverse engineer the question? Because we're think, called useless I eaters. I don't think they're trying to kill people. I think they're trying to improve what a person is. What I think we're doing... Oh, by, by chopping our son's balls off? Okay, well, you're going to go down another rabbit hole, you son of a bitch. <laughs> by increasing our ability to access information and by becoming a sort of a symbiotic creature aligned with technology. And once we're aligned with the AI, it can censor everything we do. You think big tech... The minute big tech got control, they began censoring. And it's the groups behind that are very predatory, Joe. I do agree with you there. There's no I firewalls. Do, I do. Yeah. Th here's the problem: the First Amendment currently does not apply to big tech. Right. I believe it should. It, no. And I believe, they're violating cartel laws. I believe they're organized. I believe that what's happening now with whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, these platforms are so big. I think the argument can be made that they are utilities and that they should be yes. regulated like utilities. I agree, Joe. It should, right. be, a, a, it should be a human. We did right. not. I agree. We did not uh, to have access to these things. We did not. Talk about what we're going to cover pre to this, dude. We're going to talk about a lot of things. I'm but read this. Gonna... This is what I wrote last night. Okay, you, you ready? I the Silicon you, I want Cult. Some weed for you. I want you to take it down a notch. <laughs> the Silicon Cult. Okay, go ahead. It's another article. No, I wrote this. Oh, you wrote it. These are talking points. The Silicon Cult, defying the enemy, the war on carbon. Announce up front that I am not really a liberal or conservative. I want a pro-human future. Please listen to me and hear me out. Let's stop right there. Because you He's get right. called a, a neoconservative, you get called an alt-right, you get called a far-right person. When I first met you, you were protesting against George W. Bush. And you were saying that what he was doing and what he was trying to usher in was, was, was essentially going to be the downfall of Western civilization. Even before he was elected. Yes, I remember that. So when people say, Alex Jones is far-right guy, I'm like, He's complicated. He's, he's really against corruption more than he's against any particular party. You just found that the right was less apt to censor you and more apt to listen to your ideas. Exactly. And I, and I know we're all not stoned today, and so we're being a, like a little to. aggressive. But, but here's the deal. <sighs> Election night, if I'm gra gracious enough to be here, or if you're gracious enough, I'll be here. We'll, 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 we'll get hammered. But listen, 
Let's get into Bohemian Grove. Let's get into the technocracy. Let's get into who runs things. Let's get into the mindset. Whatever points you want, and I'll try to shut yes. up and go through it. This is yes. Tim Dillon's wheelhouse. This is because Here you're saying they want Here mortality on the this, roads. Look at this thin, young, handsome, boyish, baby-faced Alex Jones. Well, that's 2004, is, but yeah, I mean, I knew you in like 99. 98. Well, yeah, 98. in 98 was I met when you in 98, but then this, I got to know this, you in 99. This was when you were, 98 was when you were protesting. And this is my clip. You guys are welcome to play this. It's really good. Yeah. I'll sign a, I'll sign a form. Okay. You can use what it. Is, what is going on in this clip? He's interviewing a lizard. Let's, let's no, this, this is the... This. This is the it's been a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. You want to start it over? It's David Gurney. Okay, let me tell you. Let me set it up. Yeah, let me set it up. Set it up. Let me set it up. Got very... Okay, yeah, okay. right when he goes. David Gergen, I'm outside. Uh, what's the main thing in New York where everybody plays? By the way, this is when Bill Hicks was alive, so I can confirm that you are not Bill Madison Hicks. Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden, and here comes David Gergen, the Carl Robe of like four or five administrations, and I knew that he was part of the actual ritual at Bohemian Grove, so I bring it up to him, and he blows up at me. Here it is. Okay. He's like eight feet tall. Is there a camera, or are you? Yeah, right there, just about. Yeah, but I just want to get your permission first. Here. Okay, okay, this is looking like I've, I've got. No, I understand. Just about a minute or two. Okay, great. We're talking to David Gergen, and he has advised several presidents, and of course has uh, written quite a few uh, books, and uh, is a, I would call you a political pundit or researcher. Okay. Commentary at over the hill, whatever. One last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 1996 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor, they were the Republicans were criticizing you, oh, what about Bohemian Grove? And then you countered them, uh, and then you countered them by saying, hey, I don't run around in the woods naked. What did that mean? Here is the before-mentioned Washington Times article where he said, I didn't run around naked like they do. I, I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what quote you're referring to. I'm not aware of any quote like that. Uh, listen, uh, uh, I am a, 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 a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, uh, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's uh, that. Uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Now, what we're watching for people that are just listening is a bunch of people wearing robes that are burning an effigy in front of a giant statue of Moloch the Owl God. And it's the effigy of a child. Well, I don't know what if that it's what it, it is. is. I think it's the effigy of a child. It looks like a, I believe a grown is. woman to me. It's, it's real mad right here. And, yeah. Okay. Watch this. Uh, frankly, that's uh, that. Uh, I don't Back it up five seconds. We missed it. I said you take part in the ritual. Back it up five seconds. I'm Alex Jones. That's something. Information to care. Uh, frankly, that's uh, that. Uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But there's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't we deserve to know? You, you took an. I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you we have put, public you, I'm sorry, policy. you took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up after. Sir. Oh, I'm I sorry. I just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what, I know what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was, not, that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> That's all the people, these fucking heads of state and billionaires. Yeah, that's screaming. the other thing. They run you, the world, I, these I people. I don't owe you this comment. I know, I appreciate you, you, you have, you, this is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank you, you ever and goodbye. Have you ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh. That's right. Listen. Oh, listen. he's getting cocky. You go around and, and make understandings with people and violate them. You, you ambush people on the streets, and that's an that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine, but don't ask others to respect you for it. If you, want to, you, you can do your free American like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen? I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously you don't belong there. Weaving spiders come out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three-pointer. <laughs>
Anyways. That's a three-pointer. Listen, you could ignore that if it was like a bunch of poor people in the woods doing that. These guys Even are, then, I'd be worried. Even then, it would be weird. These guys are the, are the top of like every industry in America. It's at least curious. Who goes like, in there? Well, people I like. I mean, Clint Eastwood's gone. He's not really a member. Look. Look. Is it fun? Look. It's 2,700 acres. It was set up by Mark Twain. And it was a liberal deal for like hookers and, and gay dudes and just everything else. Just a big, huge. Would you say gay dudes? What? Gay dudes. Gay, oh, gay dudes. I was like, no, I'm saying if you go back to like the 1870s when Mark Twain set up, it was classically liberal. It was partying. It was their own 2700 acres. It was saloons. They brought in female hookers. You know, it, you know, there was gay guys in there, everything. It was just, it was Bohemian Groves, what they called that. Because people did whatever they wanted. And it, was, it, was, it was open. And they had like poetry and they had plays and they had all the rest of it. Then, uh, by the time of Howard Taft became president, the Republicans basically bought it. So the reason it's important is the Republicans go there to like, they ship in all these private hookers, all these jets land nearby, but they also have a lot of gay sex, which they use then to basically compromise people into the cult. And so there's a lot of gay sex. Well, you know, how do you know this? Uh, it came out in news articles. No one ever got footage of it. I was in there for one day. I snuck in. I had people. I looked good back then. They hit on me a lot. I had like you know people I recognized from TV walking around. Hey, let's go right now. I mean, it's a big gay hookup deal for Republicans. I'm just telling you what it is. And and then and, and then they've got this this ritual that's only the feeder group. So I'm sitting there during the ritual, and I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. And the dude goes, shut up, I'll kill you. And they're all taking it very seriously. And I'm not saying it's a gay thing. I'm saying that some so of that goes you, on. So you were saying it was cool, and people were getting angry that you were saying. No, it's no. Cool. I mean, I was just quietly going oh this is really interesting and they're like shut up this is a very important ritual and they were taking it very serious this hearse comes in with the body of a child it is an effigy they're not killing yeah. it and well, they, it's and, just a bundle of sticks right yeah well it looks like a kid no well, later others infiltrated later that worked there and got his photos of it. it's an image of a kid it's a little kid because moloch in, in 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 biblical is who they they sacrifice the canaanite it's a kids. bull but yeah. they do it as an owl but they, they do it as an owl yeah but that's from the Bible, is you would sacrifice a child to Moloch. Give not your yeah. children to the fires of Moloch. Right. And, and, right. and so I've, I've given it to experts in religious history. It's not even, you know, from Christian perspective. Yeah. It's a Faustian deal mixed with Babylonian and religious stuff from Tyre. Yeah. It's quirky. Like, look at that. Look at that owl god and look at the fire underneath the owl god. And there's Ronald Reagan. I mean, if you saw that, if you were in the woods and you just saw that, you would be terrified. Shit. And, and Richard Nixon pants. said... Yeah. Richard Nixon, on the Richard Nixon tape, says it's a gay orgy. Richard Nixon said that? You can pull up. Richard Nixon talks about... Yeah, Richard Nixon said something about it where he... It's the most uh, goddamn faggy thing you've ever seen. I think it's, I think it's just allowing... <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing against... That's what it's saying. I think it's guys that aren't gay that, are, that, are, that engage in gay acts in the woods and then they have something on each other similar to Epstein's Island where that's it's like it, it, it's, that's it, it, what it's it is it's a rich it's a it's a, yeah. it's a it's like a fraternity doing that you gotta screw so it is up. that part is, well, hold on a second what is this here and they don't allow women no it says uh, founded in 1872 by no, a no, group no, of male that's the context that YouTube had Bohemian talk about Bohemian Grove this is the title of the video see I, I told you found oh, in 1872 Richard Nixon know, Bohemian know. Grove <laughs> most faggy goddamn thing he could ever imagine yeah yes play it a hundred percent play it. I want to hear it's this. It's the Nixon tapes, yeah. Let me hear this. Let's look at let's let's look at Northern California. Northern California. You know what's happening in San Francisco just gone. It's clear over it's but it isn't it isn't just down in the rainy part of town now. But the upper class in San Francisco is that way. The Bolivian Grove that I attend on time to time. The Easterners and the others that come there. But it is the most faggy goddamn thing you will ever, can ever imagine. The San Francisco crowd goes in there. The San Francisco terrible. crowd goes in there. It's yeah. just terrible. Okay. So weird. The, the owl and the. Uh, it's interesting and it. I don't know how seriously they take it. I mean, that's a real question, right? Well, yeah. The, I, mean, I mean, the whole gay thing's a side issue. Right. The point is, is that I've talked to people that. that I mean. According to Ted Gunderson, the first time I ever heard about this was from this former high-level FBI agent who was going to be the FBI director, but he wouldn't go along with corruption, so he wasn't. It's on record. Gunderson almost became the FBI director. And he blew up like the things like the Franklin scandal, and he's been a— he's, And the Finders yeah. and the Finders, finders Club. Finders cult, which was huge, yeah. which where the CIA was caught Confirmed. trafficking— the, You know, the Finders is a cult that was caught trafficking children, and the CIA squashed the Florida— uh, and, and then and, Gunderson got it yeah. raided in, in D.C. and, and right. found a whole CIA facility with the snuff films, everything. Telex machine. And so he told me yeah. about all this, and I thought he was crazy, Yeah, even though he yeah. was Ted Gunderson. You told us about it, and we actually pulled up one of those stories. And I was correct. Yes, you're correct. Yes. 
Yeah. Thank you. So Ted so, Gunnerson is the reason I know about this. And he said he said that they get people interested with, with, with that ritual. Most There's like 2,000 members. They bring about 1,000 guests. Not everybody can even bring a guest. I'm like the head of each camp to bring a guest. Most of them are nice. Clint Eastwood goes there. You know, Danny Glover goes there. But it's who? an all-male deal. Who's the other one? Danny Glover. Oh, Danny Glover? I'm just mentioning who's Lethal on. Weapon Danny Glover? I saw him there. How the fuck is he in there? They probably like him from the He's movie. He's just a fun guy. A I, guy. I saw him when I was there. I saw Danny Glover. Interesting. I'm starting to believe this is not. I'm starting to believe we can get in. I'm starting to believe it's not that. Oh, exclusive. Joe Rogan, they'd have him in immediately. Uh, immediately. Not now. Do a podcast oh, from, in care. front of the owl. Hmm. But I just want to say that <laughs> overall, Why it not? started out as a it, as Puts, a truly yeah. artsy liberal thing that I think is good. I think guys deserve to go off the woods like we've done since humans were humans fuck, and, right? and, and and party and do whatever. Right. And, and so and so it's but. The thing is, then the weird skull... Here's what happened. About 1900 Skull and Bones that was at uh, Yale in New Haven, Connecticut, that was a German death cult, it took over Bohemian Grove, and that's when they set up that as the central deal. So it's this big, inviting, fun party. What happens at Skull and Bones? Because that's one of the other rumors about Skull and Bones. Well, they you, compromise I you. I know. They compromise you so that you're always a part of this... Well, before he died, I did multiple interviews with Anthony Sutton, the top congressional advisor to Senator Frank Church. And we only know about Sutton because Charlotte Iserby, whose father was high-level skull and bones, gave him all of their internal manuals. And she's been a frequent guest. She's, she's retired now. America's secret establishment, an introduction to the order of skull and bones. Yes. Okay. And so this is this is a Russell Trust, uh, true Illuminati. Illuminati set up 1776 to counter our revolution by Adam Weishaupt. It funds the Jacobins. It funds the French Revolution. It's the, it's the opposite of a true egalitarian, open liberal revolution. It's the leftist. Always say they're the liberal. Liberal and leftist are two different deals. Leftist is left-hand past Satanism. Liberalism is egalitarian, open society, true liberalism. And so the left-hand path uh, set this up. And then they wanted, they, they sent all this opium money they had over in 1831 to Yale to set up a German secret society of the Illuminati, which then has become one of the dominant secret societies. And in there, they do actual satanic rituals. They get in uh, coffins. Uh, they, they, they do simulated human sacrifices. They have gay sex as part of the ritual. They, they, they bathe in uh, huge facilities of feces. Uh, this was this was a made by Robert De Niro made a, a movie. Uh, Skull and Bones are do, they're doing that stuff now? Absolutely, I know wow. somebody broke into it. But wow, who's the? Uh, How can this be proven? Well, Matt Damon made a movie called The Good Shepherd, I think. Yes, and and in that, it's Robert De Niro directed it. Okay, and that's super accurate. Where it's got the, the sword and the devil, and they're in they're in these big vats of cow manure. They they and, did leak a Facebook uh, photo album of a bunch of skull and bones kids hand on a deer island. It kind of looked like losers. I know they're not. <laughs> oh, oh, no, but, I know they're not, but they kind of look like losers. I mean, it was kind of like a embarrassing. lot of billionaires look like losers. Yeah, they look like emaciated. You were like, these are the these are the Illuminati. It was kind of like no. Ugh. I totally agree with you. Yeah, remember, remember ABC News because they wanted to get Bush in trouble right before the two thousand and four election. Another frat was able to, because they're all doing this crap, right. shoot video down into it where they're going, devil equals death, Satan. And they had girls they finally brought into the membership. It was all boys before. Yeah. Sacrificing. So, of course, it's idiotic. It's training wheels for what they do. But inside, they go grave rob. They've got Geronimo's skull. Yeah, the George H.W. Bush stole, supposedly stole Geronimo's skull. Yeah, you got to do things like- I don't know if that, but that's a, that's a legend rumor thing. Well, yeah. It's, well, I- it's, it's probably been true. It's been broken into. Yeah. Uh, one time the police went in there. But the point is, is that Skull and Bones, Order 322, is the Illuminati Germanic death cult that now set up chapters all over the U.S. And it took over Bohemian Grove around 1900. And so that's why Bohemian Grove is still this artisan, you know, deal of elitist artist. But then it got co-opted by the Republican Party in Skull and Bones. And Helmut Schmidt, German chancellor, wrote Men in Power as a political retrospective. When he retired in the late 80s saying, I love our Illuminati rituals that we have in Germany, in our own sacred groves. But I think they've taken it to a new level with Skull and Bones at Bohemian Grove, and I really enjoy the time we have there. So these are just these elite institutions where, and, and Skull and Bones, I think they seek to like create uh, close friends amongst people that may not know each other, create loyalty amongst this group of people. That's why they got to tell them all the things they've yeah, done. Yeah, you got to tell them all the sexual history, all that stuff. They want these people to be loyal to each other, so when they... They're not loyal to the laws of America. They're loyal to this this oath that they take with each other. And exactly. And, and it's right. like a Team Look America. Look at this. It, Look at this. It, 
descendant sues skull and bones over Geronimo's bones. Documents yeah. show George H. Bush, George W. Bush's grandfather robbed Geronimo's grave members. <clears throat> uh, members of the secret society allegedly steal valuable things and put them in tomb. Great grandson says Geronimo should be bur buried in accordance with the tradition. Federal law protects Native Americans' rights to their family members' remains. Wow. And let's expand on that. What he just said, because this guy's done his studying. It's like Thank in, you. it's like a Team America when the head guy goes. <laughs> the only person who's ever said I've no, no 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 nobody says he goes suck my cock Gary. It's not about sex. In Skull and Bones and Bohemian Grove, he what he said is most of these guys are not gay. It's right. an act of dominance. Like oh you're a senator you want to be president bend over and like a former president screws you in the ass, and that's what they do. I mean that, the ritual is I'm in charge bend over. Well, isn't that mm -hmm. a, a thing with fraternities anyway? Like hazing the yeah, jizz it, on a cracker exactly. So it? it's the next deal. Yeah, but most people in fraternity, I mean, these are the top kids. These are kids that they think are going to occupy leadership positions in the world. And often so, do. And eventually. often do. So even Let though me people, give you an example. Yeah. Even John Ronson saw the photo with me when we snuck in Bohemian Grove. Yeah. And, and they had it hanging in. And people say, why don't you get a video? I have a camera hidden right here. It's Henry Kissinger bent over in a woman's dress, sticking his fingers in his ass. Bill Clinton in Wait. a blue dress with Jeff in Jeffrey Epstein's house. Yeah, but that's a just an artist rendition. Do you know that that was just an artist made that? Yeah, but maybe why? this was an artist rendition. We're in a clubhouse. Yeah, Ronson wrote about this. Oh, so it's a photo or a, it, a it, painting? No, it was a. It looked like a photo, but let's just say it's a painting. I don't know. I wasn't. I mean, it's, it's ancient memory, twenty years ago. Okay, twenty plus. You know, but I mean, Ronson's like, look at that. And I'm like, oh, is that Kissinger? Yeah, and it's Kissinger. It, it's all about being improper. And then right. they all go get caught to compromise each other to be in the club. Right. It's a hazing thing. So that they can trust each other because they're all doing shady shit. Yeah. Yes. Even if it's an artist's rendition, why does Jeffrey Epstein have it in his townhouse? A picture of the president in a blue dress. Well, because the president flew in his fucking plane well, that's what 26 I mean. times. That's what I mean. He was basically yeah. And by the way, Israel Maxwell move, is now come out in court. It's getting no attention confirming, okay, Clinton did fly to that island. That broke four days ago. It's gotten zero right. attention. Yeah, no, they're not yeah. paying. They're not paying attention. We haven't heard anything other than those court documents that listen, just came out. Listen, I told you. Listen, guys, it's not like I'm even that special. My mom's brother was a famous helicopter pilot in Vietnam, running black ops into Laos and Cambodia yeah. and stuff. And then he, I, I, I shouldn't tell these stories, but no one's ever heard this stuff. But you know, I remember growing up him telling me this stuff, and it was it was true. Like they were, I'm, like, I'm not going to do it. The please, point is, please. No, What's I the problem? Can't, I just can't do it. What's just, the danger? You said so much. Uh, uh, well, no, I mean, let's just say he took the fall for something that was going on. He didn't get in trouble for it. He got promoted. And he was right. involved in Iran Contra. And that's how people get promoted. They fail upward by taking a lot of times the blame for something or this is, uh, that's like common. Yeah, so I yeah. grew up. I mean, I grew up not just him, but other family, you know, that was, it was like something special, that, you know, about those Navy SEAL guys, you got a security done a bunch of crazy stuff. That's what our military does. It's, it's not what you hear on the news. Right. And, and, and it, it's just completely out of control stuff. Right. And I mean, my uncle told me, he said, he said, yeah, I know I got out of working for these groups and everything. Uh, as you know, an army officer that was sheep dipped. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. Yeah. He wasn't wearing an army uniform. With stuff he was yeah. doing. Yeah, right. Hot, we were talking high level. Like yeah. we're talking running the real stuff. Like right. Special he had the ops. He had yeah. the. Well, he he was in charge. He had like the command base in Guatemala City. Right. Because he was like a top Morse code guy. Yeah. Of course, they had satellites then, but nobody could read this Morse code coded. So he was sending stuff to the White House Morse code. Like the he was like when he was a kid, he was a champion Morse coder. So he wasn't just in command. He was like running all the stuff. And uh, he just said, I had to do it because he said it was kids being smuggled out of orphanages by the CIA for sex ops in D.C. Jesus and Christ. He told me that he told me that when he was dying of pneumonia. Jesus. Fuck. Um, yeah. now, now, what is it with kids? Why it's is the way to compromise people? It's, it's, it's the it's the energy, too. Yeah. I mean, if somebody will hurt kids and he God. wouldn't. If somebody will hurt kids, yeah, it's like, what else? They'll do anything. But that's what everyone's so terrified of today. Right. That there are some sex trafficking and sex cult and, and there's 10 times over 10 times high the bust. level people but that's like and if, they are though but that's but a if, fact right but if you want to get the like, QAnon shit gets wild big, and it's sloppy and messy right. and you've talked about that too it gets sloppy and messy and they're not right about everything but the idea there are human traffic the the entire yeah, reason, QAnon is yeah. just people on the internet they're uh, like playing games larping act, acting like they're right. taking credit for something and a lot of them are good people it's just that sure. you can give them like bonafide like look they just busted a giant child trafficking ring associated press they don't want that they want no, there's underground bases and there's dinosaurs right. and there's so aliens. They don't want the real shit. 
They don't want the real thing. So is it that they're just into things that are just huge, more ridiculous than reality? Like what is? Yeah, because it's escapism, and Hillary's in prison secretly. Oh right. I think they just learned about the world over the last year, and it melted their mind. Like you've been looking at this stuff. Yeah, you were on with Joe a few months ago. You crystallized it perfectly. Yeah. They've been asleep. Now they've woken up, and now they think everything's a cartoon version. We'll say it like you said. Yeah. Well, it was just like again. It's like if you didn't know anything about it, the Franklin scandal, you didn't know about Epstein, or you hadn't read these books, you didn't know the stories your uncle told you, and then eventually you just found out there was an island where all these politicians were going to and having sex with kids, and they were getting compromised. Your mind would melt, and then you would get paranoid, and then you would start thinking that everybody's a pedophile and that there's tunnels underground. When the reality is, it is bad, but sometimes you have to take a step back and take a breath and realize that like there are good people. And not everybody is evil, but there is a lot of evil out there. But you got to take a step back and, and try to realize, like, what is what? Well, there's one picture of Clinton getting massaged by this woman, and they were using it as uh, sort of uh, evidence. But the woman's clearly a woman. She's sure. in her 20s. And they were yeah, saying, but she'd been working for him since she was, like, 15. Let's never use Clinton as the example of the QAnon people being wrong. <laughs> That's not even what I'm saying. Like, never there the it is. That's a grown woman. She's right? a grown up. Yeah. So listen, let's be clear. The media did a limited hangout. They went with these whistleblowers instead of all the other people. And and the fact that the, the, the witnesses reported at Epstein Island in the Caribbean, Little St. George, and he on the other island too, that boats would pull up in the middle of the night to these shacks with, with little brown kids. And those are the ones that get disappeared. But who who reported this? It's in it's in uh, the uh, it's in major documentaries. It's in Netflix documentaries. It's in all the witnesses we talked to, and they said uh, my witnesses, my people I talked to over ten years ago said, you remember me telling you about it? They've got an island in the Caribbean. They've got an island in the Mediterranean. That uh, they've got ranches in the Southwest, uh, and that they well, he had a ranch in New Mexico. Right? Yeah, that came out later. I wasn't told yeah. exactly where. I mean, the idea that these kids would disappear potentially isn't crazy. I mean, no, it's not crazy. It's at not all. crazy at all. The thing. Here's an example. Yeah, I was yeah. told by a. High level source that major Hollywood producers by name ran a cult where they branded women next to their vagina. The Nixium thing. But but I, but I put right. it out two years before it broke. So yes. I was told this by high level source. I remember you talking to me about it. And and then they had a they even had articles going uh, in Huffington Post. Jones claims Harvey Weinstein's connected to groups that you know do all this, and. I was just going off what people told me, and I said, I didn't even say Weinstein. That's what's crazy is they were already trying to cover it in case I said that. They're like, oh, Weinstein's not involved in the branding women. Well, it never even came out he was. It was the other guy. Right. So it's just- but what you said did turn out to be true. Yeah. As fantastic as it sounded, as outrageous, right. as ridiculous, it turned out to be true, first and time, now it's in the news. First time I ever heard of Ted Gunderson. Let me pull him up. Ted Gunderson. It's on Wikipedia, up to be FBI director. He was the head of L.A. Imagine what he learned there. And he used to tell me, he goes, man, I've been in the FBI 20 years. I got to be the head of L.A. He goes, like, it's devil worshiping everywhere. Blew me away. You know, pedophilia, you name it. Um, and he knew about the Manson thing really being a satanic yeah. ritual. And there's a senator from Nebraska named John DeCamp. Who, I know who he was friends with. Who he was friends with. And John DeCamp was a guy who, he blew the whole thing wide open. Like He was the, CIA. He, he blew the whole thing wide open. Did was you? DeCamp CIA, you, mm -hmm. you think? But he was one. No, of he told good, me I was friends with him. He was one of the good ones. Like he, he, he was, was involved in Operation Phoenix. And then yeah. they they kill. Well, well, that was um, that was his mentor. So DeCamp's mentor was um, a guy who was a high level CIA guy. Who Jamie can pull that up. He was in a Phoenix operation and he was killed. And I forget in, in, in the in the in the in the, uh, in, the canoe. in the canoe. And, yep. and it, you know the dinner was still on the table. Jamie, he was killed in a canoe. Yeah, this Kayak. was a, a high level CIA guy. John DeCamp was a Nebraska senator who broke open this human trafficking operation. This, this by the way, I'm having cult. hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. no, it was a pedophile cult that was trafficking kids across America, and it was a centered out of the Omaha Federal uh, Omaha Federal Credit Union. It was being run by a guy named Larry King, who was this rising star in the Republican Party. He's probably still alive. He has pictures of Maureen Reagan, all that stuff. These kids were being trafficked to D.C., to L.A., to New York, wherever. DeCamp stumbled upon this, stumbled upon the occult, weird, ritual shit going on, too, in addition to the pedophilia and all that. And then he went to this guy, his mentor, who we knew from, from Vietnam, from the military, who was a CIA guy whose name is escaping me. William, William Colby. William Colby. He went to William Colby, and William Colby basically said to the camp, listen, you're going up force, you're going up against forces that are way too powerful. You don't even know what you're, you're, you're knocking on here. And then William Colby, I think, changed his mind and said, fuck it. You know what? We should stop doing, like, let's, if we're going to fight this, let's fight it. And then a little while later, William Colby, who was in great health, great shape. 
yeah, has an accident in his canoe is found dead um, in a river right by his house with his dinner still on the table. So it's like nobody nobody gets up in the middle of the dinner to go canoeing. So this has been a common theme forever. Whereas if you go against these these people, you find you're dead. He was 76 when he drowned, though. Yeah, but in a canoe while his yeah, dinner but, was still but on the table. Sometimes people have heart attacks when they're 76. I understand. I, that. I understand. I that understand that. Okay, we're connecting dots here that maybe we don't need to disclose. Okay. Uh, William Colby, director of Central Intelligence, chose to disclose some of the nation's darkest secrets to save the spy service he loved. Drowned on April 27th in a tributary. No, I've talked to folks. Who, they Island. killed him. They killed him. He was 76. How about Gar in the this guy Gary Caradori, who was a private investigator, hired to get to the bottom of the? It's like Barry Seal, man. They're getting rid of the people. They just get rid of them. All well, right. So, so I, listen. I, I, we've uh, we've done Bohemian sense. Grove. We've done Bohemian Grove. Let, let, let me tell you, Senator DeCamp was on record running major level Operation Phoenix. Yeah. Which was a high level CIA torture operation and, and, and execution operation. So, uh, Apocalypse Now is kind of based on some of the things they did. But okay. maybe he's on record highly decorated at that. I don't want to go too far away from the Epstein thing because I still have a whole lot of more questions. Let's go back to Epstein. Okay. The island itself. Like, first of all, Epstein had this crazy place in New York City. Seven story palace. That the guy who owned Victoria's Secrets, he gave it to him? Yeah, because of probably blackmail. Right. And then there was other billionaires who it turned out had, and this is like had been glossed over. And no Including one Bill Gates. All. Bill Gates stays there and tried to deny it. But Bill Gates denies uh, staying with uh, Epstein, but confirmed he stayed there and in his Paris home. Okay. And uh, this was also, he met with him post his first arrest, correct? Yes. Because he was arrested. Yeah, a lot of people did. Chelsea Handler had dinner with him, I believe, after the arrest, too. I mean, a lot of people looked past that, apparently. Yeah, the, no, that did, uh, royal, British royal. Okay, Bill Gates met with Jeffrey Epstein many times despite his past. And there I got to say, Jamie's really fast. He's the best. He's the best. Um, <laughs> so let's let's go back to this. He's married where, to Dylan. Where, where is he getting? Yeah. Epstein had he, a huge interest in tech. He, he loved tech. Yes, yes, and he wanted to. He 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 brought scientists and and big tech people over his house in New York City. Here's the deal: yeah. they were doing. I said this over ten years ago. That they were involved in secret breeding programs for cloning. Okay, before we get to that, scientists, how were they getting these? Sci where, where are they getting all the money? First of all, where is he getting the money to get this island? Where is he getting the money to to buy this giant house or get? This he was. We now know that he was a nexus point from the dirty sides of the CIA, MI6, and Mossad at least. Yeah. And so they were compromising people, and then as he would compromise people. Most of them knew they were being compromised. They wanted to be compromised to be let in to then run operations and be given even more money. He was also the money manager for a guy named Les Wexner, who's a billionaire who owns Victoria's Secret, the yeah. Limited, among other things. And so that's the guy He who... was gifting Epstein a property. He gave him a right. 70 Well, that's where he got some of the yeah. first money. Well, Eric Weinstein, who was a legit yes. financial guy, looked at him and said, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking of about. Of course he's, not. He's, he said he's playing a role. And then scientists, he met with him. scientists well, were like that, too. When they went to his house, they go, oh, Epstein is, is like playing a role. Yes. He has no, you know, so whatever he's doing, he's working for somebody well let me tell you they want to corrupt the scientific elite to go along with their agenda on climate change to go along with their agenda on viruses to go along with their agenda because they know scientists are respected so you want to have them compromised so they go along with whatever it is you want so whatever it is you want so if you want to do something and manipulate reality to make your agenda go through you compromise the scientists and then these elite experts who you have on film having sex with 16-year-olds, then you yeah, can... Yeah, so maybe man-made global, maybe man global warming is real and really bad. doesn't matter. The solution they have is a global tax. You pay them, so it's a scam. But as big as Epstein was, he was small compared to these other finders groups and other organizations. Right. They even came out in the news at the time in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And then the communist Chinese, they're running... The blackmail rings with Hunter Biden and the Democratic Party and, and Dianne Feinstein and all these people at levels way, way, way above anything anybody else has seen. Jesus Christ. I always I always got a bad feeling from Dianne Feinstein. I never had any feeling. <laughs> Turned out her main, her main assistant was a Chinese actual agent. Yeah, I mean, that's... Glenn yeah. Maxwell Powell pleads for release, says jailed heiress starving 
in humiliating clothes. And that's unfair for her. And I think, I mean, this what an elitist statement. Release, you should give her, you know, oh, oh she, she, I mean, on record, this woman was involved in all these horrible things. And now, oh my God, she said humiliating clothes. Why do you think Trump said, like, when they asked her about it, well, I wish her well? He's always smart ass. Like, because Epstein was killed in prison. Mm hmm. So he's like, I wish her well because yeah. they want to get data. He's also like a rich guy. He knew her, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, so he later clarified it. I gave you. I told you what think, he said. Do you think Trump's cleaning everything in in this? I mean, oh, you want to get the mo on Trump? Well, I, I would like to because I know that you're. <laughs> I'll give you. No, no, there he goes. Here we go. My only superpower is that I really try to give you the accurate thing. Doesn't mean I'm always right. Yeah. About ninety five percent of the time. That's why earlier went down that rabbit troll. What I'm saying, listen, Trump doesn't like lobbyists. He fired them all. He's trying to make the best decisions for everybody in a pragmatic free market to not have one sided trade deals. But his blind side was by him not letting lobbyists in, everyone around him became unofficial lobbyists. And that became a twenty minute rabbit rabbit hole, which I'm not bitching about. Okay. But let me tell you about Trump. Trump's dad was a super right wing pro America dude who was actually a huge funder of the John Birch Society. He introduced him to uh, the head of the House Un-American Activities Group that worked for Nixon and Eisenhower that actually ran the Red Scare. Some of it was good, some of it was bad. Roy Cohen. And right. so his personal lawyer for 25 years was Roy Cohen, who was like Joe the, McCarthy's best friend, right? Joe or, McCarthy's chief of staff. Chief of staff, yeah. I mean, his, his, he ran it. I he mean, ran it, yeah. He ran House and Senate. He was the, he was the big enchilada. And so Trump was actually heavily influenced by his father that was anti-communist, acted nice and liberal in New York, but like knew all this. John Burt's society, like, you know, we're talking whole nine yards. Well, wasn't Roy Cohn also involved in some blackmail stuff? Oh, he was huge. Okay. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. it was a whole gay mafia stuff. Right, too, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, Jesus same. Christ, you guys are deep. You're deep in this, I, I know that. Yeah, I know this. Well, I fell facts. asleep listening to every night. I would fall asleep. I'd listen to about a half hour, and then I would trail off. him <laughs> globalist, and I would fall asleep. And now I can't do that anymore. Thank you, YouTube. You can, Infowars.com. I know. I, I, oh, I, you know, we're halfway into this, I should say. People ask, where, people come up the street, they say, I used to love you. I'm sorry you're off air now. We have record traffic at Infowars.com and yeah. band.video. Band.video. Yeah. We have videos. I, I've had videos this week with 3 million views, 2 million views, a million views. Yeah. It's all there. My there. producer, you, Ben now, Avery, watches Infowars.com like during holidays. His YouTube, family will be having Christmas. He'll be in a room watching Infowars. So speaking of censorship, YouTube and Facebook have now banned all the QAnon stuff, right? Which is crazy. Well, this is what's crazy. Like, what's next? You're going to ban JFK right. conspiracy Well, theories? if I make a joke about QAnon, am I going to get banned? That's the other problem right. for comedians. But it's like you said. The, the, the Young Turks show. Well, well let's just it, first talk about the Young what, Turks. What is the the, the show that let's, the let's, Jacobins? Because uh, Tim Tim Dillon had put the uh, the show. Uh, he he put it. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you, Jamie, so you can see what it is. Uh, I'm gonna send you the uh, video that Tim uh, Dillon or excuse Tim me, Poole. Tim Pool had sent yeah. me. I'm gonna send it to you right now, Jamie. So so let me explain this. Okay, the Young Turks. Are anti free speech for everybody, including me. And then she goes, But I'm not anti free speech. I just want Alex Jones banned. But then they have this new show called The Jacobins. Well, let's talk about evil. The Young Turks were the group that so ran the Armenian the genocide. They ran the Armenian genocide on record, killed over a million and a half Christians. They named themselves the Young Turks. They go, Oh, we don't know what that means. Now they're called the Jacobins. The Jacobins ran the French Revolution right. and were the Illuminati. I told you about them earlier. Yeah. So it's like every name they've got is like the Hitler youth, basically. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the Young Turks. And that now, is a very unfortunate name, the Young Well, they Turks. also, people run around with, you know, the people that watch a lot of those shows walk around with either the Che Guevara shirts or they're unironically calling themselves Maoists. These are like suburban white kids walking around going, I'm a I Maoist. Think, I mean, it's kind of $800 like, smartphones. I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that is a problem, too. It's absurd. I think they're trying to do good, and I think they think they are doing good. I really right. do. I think when they thought that, hey, uh, I'm not uh, anti-free speech, but ban Alex Jones, right. they just don't understand what that means. There's a reason why you can't just go around censoring people. And again, the answer to bad speech is better speech. Right. That has always been the answer. But here's the big problem. Once they silence you, they can then make up whatever they want. Because people all the time here's go... Here's what's worse, Alex, and this is you personally, but the problem is when they silence someone, when they censor someone, and then that person's not the, the that's that's not the target anymore, they look for another target and they invariably go left. They invariably. Right. Right. Exactly. They get, they get on a power they trip. They but, get on but hold on a second. The left is not left enough. Right. So if you're a centrist, they'll call you alt-right. Yeah. Because you need to be compliant. 
completely with the ideology. If yeah. you're not compliant, they they will they keep moving what's acceptable and what ca- constitutes racism, sexism, classism, right. homophobia, transphobia. It's a power keep, grab. But they keep changing it. And they move the line. Orwell, all Orwell the time. talked yeah. about this in 1984. Yeah, he was like, if you ban all the words, if all you you will you will literally you will ba- you will change thoughts. Because you you can't have all the I forget Orwell's words on uh, on on reducing hate language. He said yes. he said he what had, they want to reduce the language where no one's even able to communicate, and that's the goal. So we think of it as a leftist thing that's out of control. No, yeah, this I is a science. Up, I paraphrased it and I fucked it up. But the point is, what they didn't see, they didn't use hindsight. They didn't. They well, they didn't. It's use, called ink sock. Well, they, what they. Di- it's so hard to talk with you. What they didn't do <laughs> is they didn't look Joe, to you where this alcohol. goes. I Don't. do. They didn't look to where this goes. They didn't understand. They didn't extrapolate. They didn't say. Or maybe some of them not, did, and some but, of them but wanted you can't, to go if where you it's start, going. If you start censoring, there's a real pro- And I know people are saying, no, you should censor people that say terrible things because they influence our children. And you you can't but joe it's a power grab they get off once they've got one scalp they're going to scalp everybody including themselves that's the motivation of the people that are doing it that's not what i'm concerned with what i'm concerned with is the problem itself because you keep finding a new target you keep finding a new a, a, new, a new person who's doing something that's incorrect. that's what i'm saying they don't want to give up they, they want more 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 but it's not that they're trying to grab power it's it's just you're always trying look you've you've started hey, a I, game yeah you started a game. they're hold losers on. and want to control reality because they're projecting their own hatred of themselves on us you don't think part of it is that they want power to control the discussion there's most certainly a part of that yeah that's a part that's human nature but joe it's you just nature. said i'm hard to t- deal with well because you talk over people people when they're talking you don't let them get the full you've been talking a lot you get you don't let people get a full thought out they're in in tim does it like when he's having his thoughts how the sensors are good what i was saying is he's talking and you you jump in and the problem is i know you have some things to say but then you fuck with the thing that's coming out of the other person okay explain to me how the sensors are loving people that's what you're trying to do not saying they love people i'm saying they don't they they're not looking at it correctly because the way they're looking at it, they think they're doing a good thing and they're going to usher forth some utopian uh, world of communication where people are only saying the things they agree with. The problem with that is you don't find out who's right unless you get everybody talking. But it's the only, I agree. It's the only but, way but, but Joe, do it. it's worse than that. You can't have an echo chamber. It's dangerous. De- echo chambers are dangerous. And in, what tech has done is created these left-wing ideological echo chambers. I totally and agree. And they're also forcing people into self-censorship. Because if you don't comply with the rules that they've set forth, then you get banned so you comply. And you, 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 find, you, you find people... It's a cult. It is a cult. Ideolo- ideologically. I talk like this? <laughs> Listen, it is a cult. Joe. I think there's a lot of these cults. Joe, what I'm trying to say to you is you've never been not smoking weed with me on air. You need I know. Weed. It's a bummer. We should have had you you're come in a week. Ang- you're angry. You're upset. I'll but be I had, here we, during the election. I wanted election. you to be on before the, you know, the, the election you, and the Joe. shit. Who do you think's going to win, by the way? Donald Trump is going to win. You think so? But then the Democrats are going to contest it. And we're going to have the 79 days of but hell. Why, why are all the polls showing that Joe Biden is in the lead? Do you think it's all Just bullshit? Just like last time they said Hillary was going to win. Yeah, but these are the post- Post uh, election polls. Joe, what I want to do is talk to you right now. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> he's like a fun, he's a conspiracy phone sex I operator. Want to talk about what a sexy man you are right now. I am. Uh, he's the only one here drunk. This is a real I am problem. Channeling Tim Dillon. He's Tim Dillon. That's not how Tim Dillon talks. Tim Dillon's looking at you right now. Do you Joe. do you really think that Trump is going to win? Because it's close. Yeah. No, he's going to win big. Interesting. Really, but, but they're going to think that. But but they're going. Listen, I was not trying to interrupt you earlier. Well, you. This is how you talk. It's okay. You, you, you're, you're. This is how you guy. talk. You got a lot of energy. Joe, passion. Joe, Scott you've passion. talked. You've, passion. Yeah. you've talked twice as much in our last four-hour podcast. I love it. This is the sober Joe Rogan. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Trump. What were we arguing about about political correctness? I don't know, but you were saying that we weren't arguing. He was saying that the censors. I was agreeing with you. The censors. Some of the censors are trying to do the right thing. Yes. And that you were saying, listen, it's deeper than that, and then that's where we left off. Yeah, it's all been scientifically set up where they always say, oh, we're we're for outliers now and dog whistles. It's all about normalizing centralized control. Big tech knows it's psychological algorithms. It's totally destructive. China that has people in Muslims in death camps, Christians in death camps, Buddhists in death camps, is trying to totally normalize 
censorship here domestically when the whole left is involved with communist China through big tech. It doesn't say a word about them. They have no moral high ground to stand on, Joe. Well, we have a real problem in this society when, when it comes to tech, first of all, because all the people that are on the moral high ground who are buying iPhones, you know where those things are being made. Like we right. all, we all know. There's, Everybody knows. There's and I no, admit it. I admit it. I admit it as well. There's no iPhones that are being made in Ohio with highly skilled workers that are paid a, an excellent wage and they have great health care benefits. That's not what's happening. I don't know why, but that's not what's happening. Sure. They've decided that it's better to make them cheaper or better to have a higher profit margin and make them in other countries, or at least they decided that initially and now they're stuck. Let me ask you this. Who do you think is going to win? I will be very subdued now since I'm bad. Joe Jorgensen. Yeah, I think Joe Jorgensen has a great shot. She's she's a shoe in. <laughs> and then Kanye West. I think Joe Jorgensen, Kanye West. I think it's a it's a nail but it's it's neck and neck. You know what drives me crazy? I think it's neck and neck, right? And Jennifer Aniston was she made a tweet that said What drives uh, me crazy not, is you're hating me right now no, I love because you. you're not drinking. Hold on a second. <laughs> j- 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 there was a, a fucking hilarious um response by Kanye West. She said, uh, Jennifer Aniston put on Twitter, hey, it's not funny to uh, vote in for Kanye. Don't do it. And he goes, Friends wasn't funny either. Hilarious. He's right. He's right. That's great. Friends was not funny. <laughs> but it's, you see the two of them together. Friends was a funny show. Joe, you were great on Friends. I wasn't on Friends. That's a joke. <laughs> who do you think, you think Trump? I don't know. Well, I don't if know you were a I'm Friends not... character, who would you be? I'd Jennifer... probably be Matt LeBlanc, right? You'd be Jennifer Aniston. I don't think so. <laughs> Who's Matt LeBlanc? His name is Joey. Jennifer's so the most yeah, successful. I, mean, I identify as Jennifer Aniston. He was dumb. I'm dumb. Perfect. Wouldn't you like to have a dentist like Jennifer Aniston and Horrible Bosses? Uh, she was a dentist? What did she do? Uh, molest her uh, patients while they yes. were under? Okay. Well, you could be molested by worse people. Well, they're not kids. But I just think it's funny that they, yeah. someone who's an actor would say that. Like well, this, this thing that they feel like they have this influence and they're going to change the way people yeah, vote. Stupid. This 80 days of hell you speak of, what does that entail? Just so I can mentally prepare myself. 79 days of 79 hell. 79 days of hell. What are you talking 79 about? days without What's Joe gonna Rogan. What's, What's going to happen? Gonna happen? Oh, no, 79 days of us locked up in here with cases of whiskey <laughs> and huge piles of marijuana. He's lit. Yeah. Yeah. He's lit. No, no, no. Listen, You're I, a little lit, buddy. I don't Look, actually. I, I could see that bottle, and it was a fresh bottle when you sat no, down. No, that's well, that's uh, that's fake. That's Hollywood. That's not Hollywood. We're in Texas. I gave up Hollywood years ago. I haven't worked in Hollywood in a Let's long time. Let's talk about this. What were you just asking? I don't remember. 79 days of hell. If what the Democrats that? contest yeah, the election. Problem. 79. See, this is not fair. 79 days of hell. That's how many days there are after November 3rd to the inauguration. And John Podesta in the New York Times, they had a big war game where the New York Times sat in on a Democrat high-level war game with Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and all of them. And they said, we're going to contest. We think we're going to win. But if we lose, we're still going to contest. And we're going to contest, and we're going to call for the U.N. to come in and occupy the U.S. The U.N. is going to occupy the U.S.? And then, and then the, and the New York Times came out and said, we need the U.N. to intervene in the U.S. election. And now the four horsemen. Uh, just called for that yesterday. Jesus. And so they are planning to have... Who's the four horsemen? AOC and the rest of the crew. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And so... <laughs> Those, I thought that's the tribe. Anyways. And so they're... they're the the, and they're planning to have Western states... Western states secede. And, uh, and they're okay. saying they're going to hold the election up. You already saw this. They already denied the last election. Well, they could and, take Portland. Yeah, you take it all. Take this a lot is of the West. 79 days of hell. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Who cares? You, <sighs> when did you decide to try to escape California? Well, I told you, the looting. When the looting hit. Well, no, you told I me off air. Z- I know. But. Yeah, you, I had zero faith in their ability to uh, maintain law and order because if you're going to pay all that money in taxes, uh, I feel like you should at least feel like they're protecting things. And when they were just letting them smash windows and cops were told to stand down, uh, particularly in Santa Monica, th- there was like direct orders and the sheriff was you know, being widely criticized for this. They were told to stand down while these people were smashing and looting things. Um, when, when they were doing that, I was like, well, you can't live in a place where that's being tolerated. Because this, 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 this goes from stores to, you know, they'll move to nightclubs, they'll move to restaurants, they'll decide what they're going to smash. It had nothing to do with George Floyd. No. 
It had nothing to do with him. I agree. Those, those and, restaurants, those stores had nothing to do with George Floyd. And now, like in Minnesota, Minneapolis, the crime rate's like triple. The police won't even show up. They're like, people are like, why are you even paying you? Yeah. So, so what do you think, both of you, Mr. Dillon, what is the end game of this? I'm going to finish my, my answer yeah. because okay, I'm not done yet. It was also that there was restrictions that were put in place that didn't make any sense to me. There's restrictions for restaurants, restrictions for comedy clubs, restri- restrictions for gyms. Like, why can't you just wear yeah, a mask? Why are churches closed, yes. but all but Walmart's open? Well, why are churches closed, but why is it okay to protest? It's not alcohol. Why is everybody, okay. why is everybody letting people protest? Right. Why, why aren't they saying, listen, I understand your, your want and desire to protest, but understand that you're most likely contributing to the spread of this virus? Yeah. Because that's a fact. Right. Even if you support the protests. The end, I agree. Yeah, the end game seems to be if you let society get bad enough, people will then accept all these more draconian security measures and, and censorship across the board. With do you tech. think that's what's going on with California? Like, why do you think they've kept California locked down this much? They want to kill the U.S. economy. China's been open for six months. They admit it's, it's leaked out that they're doing this to kill the U.S. economy. Remember, It's leaked out how? Oh, let's come out. Democratic Party uh, reports. It's, 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 it's been stated. I mean, you heard Democrats all over the news say we want a depression to make Trump look bad. Who said this? Uh, Bill Maher. Yeah, but Bill Maher is not a part of the Democratic Party. He's a comic. I know, but I used Bill a public. Maher jo- but he jokes around about that. Like, look, if okay, we well, can crash the economy. Okay, well, regardless, Trump- when Jews try to, or Baptists in New York try to have an event, the police show up and arrest them. Yes. But then when Antifa or BLM was around, burn stuff down, the mayor says it's great. And the mayor said, de Blasio said, this is legitimate. Antifa's legitimate. Your church isn't. Your synagogue isn't. So it's power. It's selective enforcement. It's martial law. I have articles right here because everything I brought today, I have the proof. ABC News is reporting in blue cities in, in Texas that they're going to come to your house and demand a COVID test. And if you don't, they're going to arrest you. Well, the federal and state courts have Wait, ruled they can't that, do that. Where's that being said? W- El, El Paso, Texas, and other But areas. I want to bring you back to what you're saying about crash right the economy. Now. You use Bill Maher as an example, and I just don't think that's a credible example because he's a well, comic. Well, he said that. Uh, yeah, but he's a comic, and oh, he's they not always a politician. Say, he, the, he's comics a politician. have bigger coverage than news people now. That's why Colbert and all them pose uh, yeah, as news you, people. Alex, you're, you're, you can't use him as an example of someone who's really? a politician who is calling think for tra- the economy yeah, to but crash. Strategically, if I was a Democrat, I wouldn't want things to open up again until Trump was out. Right? Agreed. I mean, that's strategic. Agreed. Yeah. If you want, China if you didn't want, want the China to return. China wants us shut down. China admits they're using the virus to keep us shut down. Do you okay. think he's a bioweapon? Uh, well, I could give you an hour-long treatise on COVID nineteen. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll get to that momentarily. Okay, I don't want to anger b- you b- though. Before we, <laughs> before we no, get... I love being here. I'll sit here and like tell fart jokes if you want. <laughs> I'd rather get drunk and just have a good time. Before we get to that, sit in Tim's I, lap. But you yeah. said something yeah. that I want you to back up. You said that the Democrats are trying. I'm not denying the possibility that this is the case. But this seems like, if that was the case, it would be a grand conspiracy that would at least have, you'd have to have some evidence of this to make that statement, that they're trying or they want to crash the economy because they they want to, to maintain power and to change censorship and to change the way um, there the are laws countless that people yeah, Okay, well, we've had Governor Newsom, we've had Governor um, Cuomo. Whitmer, Cuomo, exactly, all say... The economy isn't going to be open because Trump's done a bad job. We're not going to open it until he's gone. And then Whitmer's even come out and but just... Tr- wait a minute. Newsom has openly said that. You sure? Yeah, type it in. I mean, I'm... But so, what do you think he said? I've well, never... Not- I Listen, I'm a, critic, I've, I'm a critic of Newsom because of his... Uh, this. He's become an autocrat. He's Keeps his this, wineries open. But there's a lot of issues, right? There's a, there's a lot of issues. So the, the, they, they, they close so many things. Joe, down. Joe, Joe. Globalism was about selling America off and bankrupting us under Cloward and Piven strategies. That's fine, but don't don't change the subject. I'm not you, specifically what Newsom has said. Um, they can pull it up just like I told you about the AT and T. But what did he say that you think? And again, I'm a, I'm not a fan of him. I'm a critic. Listen, I I think you got to give people, grown adults, the choice if they just dis- look. We don't have overrun hospitals. We don't have people dying in record numbers. They we keep don't have five percent death rates. We they don't keep have one percent. The cases and the deaths are increasing. That is true, but as long as there's a disease, they're going to increase. The, the, the question is, at what rate? 
and the people that are Joe, dying, it's never how about many of the, them it's have never comorbidity ab- factors? It's never about the death rate. It's always about increased infection because the death rate's way down. Now, the death as, rate is way down. As soon but, as the winter but, hits, but they're going to say it's flu and, and, Alex, and it's the cold. They're going to count as that. You get, you, you get me again. When, when you say the deaths increase, that is going to happen. The question is, by what rate and how many? Right, but you what? take the normal flu and and pneumonia and morbidity like they did this year, and you add that to the number. They've already run the same scam, and so whatever they don't count flu as a death or pneumonia anymore. They only like they all count at COVID because they get right. money on the chart. Right. They get but fifty to- plus thousand dollars when they call it a COVID death plus when they say that they get thirteen thousand to say it's a COVID patient, and they get uh, twenty nine thousand or whatever extra when they intubate somebody. And so now, since when is like Congress saying how to do medicine? Well, the, isn't the idea that they're doing this to give money to these hospitals to help them in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah. So the but, but then the hospitals reason code everything this. as COVID to get the money. That's come out. They killed most people that died died in nursing homes or died from intubation when it's an autoimmune event and you don't want intubation. It's intubation that's killing people. But they initially thought you did. But have that's to why have the it because and, it was respiratory. And thank disease. God the numbers went down because they stopped intubating. Yes. That's so now factor. it's all about everyone's being. But before there's this high the, death rate because they were intubating and they were counting on, and they were killing old people. Right. As soon as they stopped shipping folks to old homes that weren't getting vitamin D because no sun, it went like this. So so infections like this, you can pull up the graphs. Yes. You know, you're like, what's your science? Pull it up. And you know, infections like this, deaths like this. Right. Well, you're going up and down, right? Death down. Now, what did Gavin Newsom say though? That you, when you said that he said it's not going to get better until Trump's out of office. Well, it's it's Whitmer that said that specifically, and he said Cuomo because I remember that too. But he, he was just basically like, "Well, I want to be friends with Trump. There's been a bad response. We've got to keep the lockdown going, and you know, until Trump does this wrong, until we have a change, it's going to continue on." And then it's always about the power grab, like, "Oh, it's two years we have to do it. No, it's now it's first it's 15 days to keep the hospitals empty, and then it's." Uh, then it's, uh, oh, six months, and now it's two years. And then Gates said, like a week ago, it's 10 years. And now they've got the, the, the people, Fauci and others, saying, no, it never ends. You never shake hands. Yeah. And under the UN rules, they say, don't look at someone and turn your head. So in Europe, you can type this in. Uh, citizens in the UK told, do not look at other people and turn your head. It's cult programming, man. I think it's a pretty common talking point, and, and some people agree with it. Like, a lot of Democrats would say, yeah, it's not going to get better until Trump is out because Trump has made a mess of it. I don't think Trump's done the best yeah, job, that's what clearly. he said. But that's, that's a common what talking point. What could he have point. done better? Well, I'm done what better. He shut Hold down on. flights from yeah. China in February when, when Pelosi's running around in Chinatown saying, dance. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think it's a pretty common belief that they're saying, listen, we, we, so I don't think it's a conspiracy or I don't think like you have to find a source. I think it's like they believe if he wasn't in, it, that it won't get better until he's gone. So I don't think they actively are trying to make it better until he's gone. Exactly. You see what I mean? Exactly. I, they want to keep I, the crisis I, yeah. going. Do, I yeah. do see what you're saying. I yeah. just want to know if there's evidence. I want to know if there's an actual statement where he said, after when Trump leaves, then we'll open back well, up. That's again. what. That's actually what Whitmer said specifically. But he said similar things. But All right, let, well, let's find where I'm Whitmer going from memory that. here. I mean, my God, I understand. But Jamie, that's why I'm challenging well, I, I you. On. Uh, Jamie's I on a I'm cha- But I'm, cha- I'm challenging you on this because Jamie needs a people <laughs> online <laughs> Jamie a are going to want to challenge you on this, right? So I, I want. Well, that's I want what they loved find... about our last interview over a year and a half ago, which they loved was that people could go and actually check the stuff I was saying. No matter, yes. no matter how crazy, and a lot of it is true. So I want to find that quote now. See if Whitmer said that it won't get better until Trump's out of office in terms of the lockdown, yeah, Whitmer, restrictions. Whitmer, lockdown won't end until Trump's out. And didn't someone. she lose some court case recently? Yes. Her Supreme Court, but also federal courts have ruled across the country that you can't order churches to wear masks. You can't order social distancing. It's all just getting us to comply. Don't you think it's a good idea to encourage people to wear masks if they're going into large gatherings? A lot indoors? of studies, a lot of studies show that it doesn't even protect you. Listen, listen. Trump told the truth a few days ago when he came out and he said, "We're never going to control this. We have to learn herd immunity, or if you're really scared of it, take a vaccine." And the head epidemiologist of Rockefeller. Uh, hospital came out and said that and got banned on YouTube. I mean, listen, Italy did social distancing. Italy did masks. Italy did everything you were supposed to do. And they're getting clobbered again. So that makes me think that 
maybe it's not a bad idea to do these things, but they don't seem to they don't seem to Sweden prevent didn't a do, second wave. Sweden didn't do any of it, and it's the lowest death rate in Europe. Right, but it's also a, co- a country of small villages. They have a whole different way of life over there. Well, I mean, Italy Italy yeah. is a bunch of three generations living in one house. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. And, and, right? and, and they have su- they're the oldest people in Europe. Yeah. That's the problem. So yeah, and they, they need smoke, they need sunlight. Yeah. They need su- they smoke. They're all they good smoking. food. Try finding a gym over there. Jesus well, they, smoke, they smoke on the treadmill. It's so far. Every time I fucking go there, it's hard to find a gym. They, yeah. Listen, exactly. They go don't rest. Joe, Enjoy Joe, your life. Joe, have a rest. Joe, I came out eight months ago, and I and I and I was selling this stuff. But you get, I said, get it at the store. Vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and zinc. If you have that on the NIH website, it can't. According to the NIH, NIH website, cannot replicate inside the mitochondria where the where the virus plugs into the cell and makes it replicate. Okay. And so I just I mean like Jones claims he's got a cure. No, it's not a cure. If you've got sunlight and zinc and, and vitamin C and all these things you need, it's very hard to get these things. That's why it's old people in nursing homes that haven't been outside in years that are dying so easily. Now Fauci finally two months ago came out and said, You need vitamin D, you need vitamin C, and you need zinc. Well, that is true. And young Jamie takes vitamin D and he kicked it in a day. Yes. And vitamin C and zinc. Young Jamie was feeling bad for a day. But I don't want to argue, Joe. I want to just say I love Bill Gates. Okay. Let, I love I, – I use Windows. I'm looking for Tell the quote. I can't find Whitmer's a quote. specific quote that says that. There's lots of quotes about them going back and forth, obviously, because they've had right. the public battle. I just them. think anybody like that, whether it's Bill Gates or Bezos or anybody who's a billionaire, if they say here's the suggested course of action, they have to expect that they're going to be criticized. And a lot of these guys don't like taking any criticism when they, they're issuing edicts. These are billionaires that are saying, this is how we're going to live. Yeah, that's the next big question. Isn't it strange, though, that Bill Gates, who is not a health expert, is all of a sudden one of the leading voices? Yes, it's it's strange. But that's my next next question. Why is Bill Gates, who's not a doctor, suddenly on TV telling me how my life's going to go and what I'm going to do? This is the most important part. Why is this a, a big project for him? Well, he's also a guy that wanted to shoot a missile of dust into the atmosphere to help climate change. I mean... Very few people in history have had the resources to even think of doing something like that. That's right. He wants to have jets spray yeah. co- chemicals yeah. to block yeah. the sun. Right. And the scientists we went, and went, went before, Joe? no good. They went, not a good idea. So, And then if you <laughs> call him on that, if you call him on that, he goes, the conspiracy, the lies and the conspiracy theories. It's like, no, we're just asking you why you want Here's to shoot example. missiles Here's an example. into space. He went on CBS News and they go, 80% of those taking your vaccine trial are getting very sick. Some are dying. He's like, well, that's just how it is. You can pull these clips up. <laughs> what? Yeah. He said that's just how it is? Yeah. He said, well, the FDA is going to approve it. I like look this. Look at you. He's beat red. Look at you. You're blending in with the walls. <laughs> but yeah, it's a problem. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's a problem. It's a problem. It's you know, a I'm problem. kind of retarded. This is... <laughs> Listen, yeah, this is all remember is for two years they said Trump worked for I've heard of p- political mudslinging my whole life. For two years, they said Trump was an agent of Russia. He was an asset of Russia, the president. Then they did a whole report, and then it came out that he wasn't. There was no proof of it. With the CIA, the NSA, everybody. And then they, they went like this. He went, Well, we might have been wrong about that. I you mean, it's was my one of the most disturbing things to me was when Ted Cruz was cross examining uh, Comey when he was asking him yeah. questions about what they did with evidence and how they, they doctored evidence. What do you got, Jamie? Oh. <laughs> I just can't believe that Brian Redband is here. He's, he saved us. Brian flew in when Jamie tested positive for cooties. And we have had I known to have him like 16 years? Protocol. Yeah, yeah, forever. So we had to have the protocol was yeah. you have to be uh, 10 days and you have yeah. to test negative three days Should in a row. Should Brian move before here? You come. Yeah, Brian's going to move here. He's looking at houses right now. You are too. Tim's going to move I here. I might. You're moving here, bitch. I might. Come on, son. Brian. I don't know. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta save LA first from Cal- the Satanists. Listen, it's not coming back. That, I know. Hey, that, let's talk about that. not coming let, back. Please, a little bit of stuff. Yeah. I don't want to fight Joe. I don't, we're not fighting. <laughs> no one's fighting. And I'm not. I mean, but just, this much apple juice, bit, I'm having trouble it's thinking. It's okay. It's okay. I love you. No, you we're did fine. this. Just have some. No, I can't. I can't. I made a promise. But on election night, I can pop yes. in. We're going to have one. That's right. November 3rd. That's November. But I, I have, will be able to I pop have in. six more. Yeah. I, I yeah, have yeah, your yeah. Pro- we're yeah, very yeah. excited. Put that down. I have six more days of sobriety. That's going to be a fun hey, But I got to be honest. I'm a little high from this cigar. Hey, you couldn't have a bigger promo for your election night. I'm glad you actually announced it here. Well, uh, Kyle Kalinske has been asking when he can announce it, so now you know, Kyle. 
There you go. It's official. There you go, Kyle. I'm excited to get everybody in the room right, and watch listen, listen, the demise I want to cover Western some of this real stuff here. In real time. Can I show you some stuff? Yeah, what do you got? Do we ever find a quote for Whitmer? I can't find anything. I okay. Mean, there's lots of quotes, but I can't find anything. Do you want me to find it? Can you? Just Google on your phone. And Tim and I will talk amongst ourselves. Okay, go and then ahead. We'll, and then we'll pull up whatever that is. Okay. Gretchen this Whitmer, is they I almost have. kidnapped her, by the here way. Here Oh, no, I don't have it. I'm just saying oh, like, that's what Whitmer, I Whitmer, when in. Trump leaves office, quote. She was almost like, uh, find it. there was a kidnapping plot against her. No, it's yes. Whitmer. Which 52% Whitmer. of Lockdowns the- Lockdowns uh, won't end till yeah. Trump gone. That's just, come on. Right. Lockdowns won't end till Trump gone. Try that. Whatever, I know it's true. Try I don't to find it. Whitmer, lockdowns won't end till Trump gone. He'll find it. Um, yeah, the plot to assassinate her. What the fuck it was, was that It was a plot to like kidnap her. That was weird. But and I'm sure I predicted murder, up right? front that it was going to be FBI provocateurs, and it turned out the two leaders were FBI informants. What? What's even crazier is 52% of the uh, citizens in Michigan agreed with the plot. That's a joke. <laughs> It's a good one. <laughs> They're going to edit that part <laughs> where you say that's a joke. Joe Rogan's yeah. guest calls for kidnapping. Them. This yeah. is outrageous. <laughs> Deplatform. This is central when I, when control. I, when I went on Alex's show, Alex goes, Snopes always goes and finds like jokes he makes, and they go, they go uh, correction, Hillary Clinton is not an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> Did you guys see that um, Brett Weinstein's Unity 2020 account was also banned from My Twitter? My producer just told me that. Yeah. It was, his Unity 2020 account, was, which was calling for a third party party was calling for unity between people on the right and the left to get together and have conversations and, and perhaps even have a, a, an alternative candidate. That's outrageous. Well, he's a fucking scholar and he's a guy who became famous because he was a professor at Evergreen University and the leftists took over the college. When they said we're going to shut it down and whites can't come one day a month. Yeah. They, they had. And then they banned him. Yes. Well, it, it, well not, they didn't it. just ban him. They went looking for him in the parking lot. They chased around bat. with baseball bats. Yeah. It was terrifying shit. So so, so let me ask and this. Then the the principal was going along with everything. The li literally, they yelled at the principal, "Don't gesture with your hands, because you're threatening us." But the, he was talking like right. this. Like, oh, Put did your you hands hear? Out. And they started and laughing. They started out. laughing out. British yeah. universities like Oxford, I think, is the one. Look it up. Oxford or Cambridge, one of the big ones. You can't clap. It's a microaggression, Joe. Oh, that's so crazy. But this is what we were talking about for years, and people were saying, why are you concerned with what happens in the universities? It's the same thing we were saying about censorship. Because it fucking, it, it keeps going. It, it doesn't stops. stop. Yeah. When, you, when you allow that kind of nonsense in universities, those kids graduate, and they want to carry these goofy fucking practices into all of these corporations. So let me ask you about this question. And you're seeing that now. I you're want, seeing this that is, now. It's one of the things I wrote down I wanted to ask you, Joe and Tim Dillon. What what happens? How, where do they stop? Because they're going to keep running until they hit opposition, which is starting to happen. How far does it go? I was hoping there was going to be some sort of a fe federal regulation. I was hoping yeah. that Trump was going to step in and they were going to amend the First Amendment to include social media. Because I think what you're what you're seeing now, the uh, the argument that these are just just private corporations. I don't think that argument is valid anymore because the impact that they have, the significance of being able to speak or not being able to speak to speak has massive implications on our election. We see this with the New York Post it's being election censored. meddling. We see it with the New York Post being censored with this Hunter Biden story. Whether you agree with the story being leaked or not, yeah. the the fact that the New York fucking Post which is a, a legitimate newspaper, as outrageous as they are, and the fact that the fucking White House press secretary gets banned from Twitter for, for tweeting yeah. that link. That's very dangerous. This is crazy. I mean, I think it leads to, it sadly, it leads to violence, because if you take everybody's ability to communicate away, there's nothing left to do but commit acts of violence. And, and, and by the way, that's yeah. a Kennedy quote. Those right. that make peaceful revolution. Jamie found something. Right. This is as close as I could get to what, was, what he's asking for. Found. Okay, the Trump virus response is the worst in the globe, she said. If you're tired of the of lockdowns or you're tired of wearing masks or you wish you were in church this morning or watching college football or your kids were getting in-person instruction, it's time for a change in this country and that's why we've got to elect Joe Biden. I mean, that's pretty. That's right. I mean, it, you you can you make can that say whatever you want almost. Yeah, that's but that's worded. the common sentiment, this right? This is right. Pretty the, much, the problem yeah. is the problem is if you just take it from if you're tired of lockdowns, and you, you dot, would get dot, dot. one. You yeah. would get one in, interpretation of it. But if you back it up to the Trump virus response is the worst in the globe, she said 
if you're tired of lockdowns. So what she's saying is- I think is we're splitting hairs. Tr- you mean you're not necessarily. Because what she's okay, saying well, is- Okay, well, I saw a clip Trump, of her in a speech hold, please, saying that. Because that's the problem with taking something out of context. What she's saying I mean, listen, is- we got a wonderful a, person. Trump's yeah. done, no, I'm not saying that. What she's saying is that Trump has done such a shitty job, that's the reason why we're locked down, you can't go no, to church. No, I get it. I get it. The headline I was- I don't know if that's true, though. I think when you've got a contagious disease, you got people flying in from Europe and China and all these other countries China. that are expressing- you, you're go, you're going to have spread. I mean, this is a fucking insanely contagious disease. Listen, Joe, one to, of my favorite parts of your show it. is when you ask Jamie for something and the light turns on when you're looking at it. Let me ask you this: You're into numerology. How hammered are you right now on scale one to ten? Not at all. We're we're into numerology. This is when it gets good. You better. Okay. Let's talk. <laughs> Just be nice to me, Joe. I am being nice to you. You got me here. In, I know you are. Let's get serious. Everybody wants to hear what I actually have to say. Okay. <clears throat> Numerology. Uh, what was the question? You had me on 9 11. Yes. 1255, five, now 1555. Five, five. Yeah, don't connect the dots. Just, I'm in town. It's random. Well, it's you told normal, me you picked 9 11 on purpose. Yeah, that was on purpose. Okay. Yeah, All it was right. just fun. Uh, but this. There's nothing bad. But, I'm I, just... but I, this is, see, do you understand how this quote, you could interpret that in a different way? Like I think the entire what she's Democratic Party strategy I understand. is to say Trump is to blame for COVID, which and to say saying, the economy shut down till you get them elected. I don't think that that's what she's saying. They're all they're all I, saying. I understand. Joe Biden's like, that we're going to end this COVID by endless lockdowns once Trump's out. If you want to go back to normal, do this. And their own listen. This is a end of civilization event. The Rockefellers and others put out Operation Lockstep. They're never going to stop this. They're going to have COVID tracking. They're going to have checkpoints. They're going to have Apps on your phone. So how do we stop this? What Trump came out and did and said, we cannot defeat this with vaccines and with COVID tracking, with shutdowns. It's going to have to be with uh, herd immunity, which is what the scientists actually brought articles Why can't we beat it with what he beat it with? He's 74 and he eats french fries every day. This motherfucker kicked it in four days. That's what I'm That's supposed to be a death sentence. Joe, if you've got vitamin D, vitamin C, and, and... Zinc, it's very hard to get to Okay, but this. clearly he's got more than vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc. He's got a bunch of medical treatments, right? Well, he was given Regeneron. He was given things that are expensive and probably not widely available. But wait a minute. Jamie tested positive. He's right over there a day but later. Jamie's young and viral. But I'm saying, where since viral. when do since it's when a, does something come along and, and, never and we go, civilization is over, <laughs> civilization is over viral. because of this thing that came out of China. And you're not even supposed to come. You want to ask where COVID came from? You ask what it is. Jamie, what is do you it? feel what? better about the disease now that you kicked it so quickly? Uh, I mean, how, not, how old are you? First. How old are you? 37. Not 37. At first, I was a little worried for the first day. I was like, you're well, like oh, shit. here we go. Are we going down like a two week, three week? Four weeks. Ventilator time? Months. Yeah. Right. 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 Because sure. you've heard, talked to people on the show that have been fucked up by it. Sure. And, and yeah. How lucky am I going to be today is also right. what I was thinking. Like, and but, you, still but you were also taking all the vitamins. I mean, we got, yeah, I got all that. We had NAD and all that mm-hmm. stuff too in my system. Yeah. So like, I don't, maybe that helped. Yeah, I'm helped. sure. Hopefully it helped. Sure did, of course. Mm. Statistically, they said 5% of us will be dead. It's not even Well, they thought 0.1%. that, percent. Okay, this but, is what they thought. But they're the all-powerful gods. It's like the UN says, you will not question us. Big Tech says, you will not question anything <laughs> the UN says. Meanwhile, the UN's like, oh, we shouldn't do a lockdown. It's killing millions of people, starvation. But still, it's like, we're keeping the lockdown going, the United Nations said. Well, what do you think should be done? I mean, I think we should look at something that isn't much worse than the flu and say we all need natural vitamins and nutraceuticals and sunlight and health and people should just know they got to deal with it the way it is because we always get diseases we always get viruses we always live with it. the idea we got to lock society down and go into our houses and this is a post-industrial move that they're using to roll out these systems to keep us locked down in our homes right and if you want to be cynical this is where you step in and say the reason why they want us to be upset and they want the economy to be fucked is because they hate the president and they want him out of office and they want to regain power they want the democrats they want to in remake office. I mean, the american economy the, in the image of what they want they want to remake a lot of these these um systems that they feel are for whatever reason uh, they unjust. Give unjust or unjust or whatever, and they want to use this opportunity to kind of redraw the lines. And exactly. That, they do that after 9-11. Exactly. This is the new 9-11. The UN and, and, and the Davos group all say this is the post-industrial world, the Great Reset. i got a copy of it for right here. And they say in these documents, we are going to 
reorganize society. COVID is good to shut down the carbon. Carbon is bad. We're going to end success. We're going to end prosperity. We're going to track everybody. We're going to control their lives all under the name of COVID. They said all that? They said we're going to end success. We're going to end prosperity. Uh, well, yeah. In the lockstep the Rockefeller document 2010, they say we'll have a viral release or a simulated one that creates total fear. We'll bring in a police state. Martial is law. Is this available for someone to read? Absolutely. Alex, wasn't okay. there something called Agenda 21 or something that? where they were saying, we want people living in cities, we don't want home ownership. We Compact don't want... cities, yeah. yeah, and, and, this is, yeah. And then you were saying it earlier, they go, oh, it's for the greater good that we don't have cars anymore. It's for the greater good we have don't no, have no, single... No, that's not what I was saying. What I was doing was give, playing devil's no, advocate. you were quoting them. Yeah. What I was saying... There's I'm not saying you said that, Joe. You believe in that. You I was saying that autonomous... I do believe in cars, too. Autonomous vehicles are, in the future, at least, likely to be safer than people just driving and texting. Well, it's not safe given control over these corporations and robots making ourselves obsolete. We need to build a pro-human future. Oh, well, I'm pro-human. But no, I know I, you I are. I'm not saying you're not, Joe. The Rockefeller thing from 2010? That sounds a weird so segue. Already, I'm pro-human. I, I started... I know, uh, I was already looking this up as he mentioned it because I was going down my own little rabbit hole. It says when I first started to find it, my first search just says there's a small, a large conspiracy has been built out of this small grain of truth from this document from 2010. Okay. That's what it starts to say. So I haven't. Oh, is that Snopes? Fun. Small there's grain this, of truth. Yeah. So Snopes yeah, is like God. It's yeah. like I don't think is it Snopes that you Google. Let's this? focus on the grain of no, truth. No, no, no. Who says it's a grain of truth? <laughs> I'm trying to feed, hold on. No, no, it's, it's Operation Lockstep, yep. and it says a global police state will be brought in from a pandemic, and there'll be worldwide martial law. It actually says it in the document. Okay. It's like they always go like, oh, there's no Hunter emails. They admit the emails are real. Right. I love that clock. It is weird that they're saying TGT Studios. Okay, Wait, is it, it is weird. Here's the document. Okay. Word the word. Rockefeller Foundation Annual Report 2010. I'll, I'll control F. What would you like me to look up? Any, any uh, look up uh, police state. Look up uh, yeah. Just look up police state. I forget the exact words. I mean, you know, let's just go read it for yourself. Man. Yeah, Control nothing, F police state. Nothing came up. This is just one paper. That's it. I mean, that's the whole PDF is here. It's like it's re really, really long. So when you control st F yeah, police state, up. nothing. nothing okay. Up. What else? Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've I've read it before. It says that. So anybody can go read it right now. So you, you think they edited it? No. No, it's. I mean, I can't remember the exact word. Okay, well, let's look up pandemic. Look up pandemic. Pandemic just means widely distributed. Epidemic means you're actually sick. Yeah, four mentions of the word pandemic. Okay. <clears throat> All right. With no network to transfer critical infectious disease information without open lines of communications, thousands more fall sick. The new, in quotes, disease becomes an unchecked pandemic. By the time the... The right expertise is brought to bear it's on the problem. For world government. It's too late. The disease has spread around the globe. In a world of global trade and travel, what's traded faster and travels furthest are the microbes in every handshake. Southeast Asia. So, what are they? What is this in reference to? Okay, it says a few miles east. Bah, 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 young boy and his men. No, hold on, don't please go back to that. Yeah, just it's just a, it's just a, a scenario that they're painting. So make that a little larger. No, no, no go back to it. Just go back to where it was. All right. The potential pandemic of the past few decades have severely tested the world's ability to work across human borders. Detection remains weak in many parts of the world. The public health response has frequently been slow and fragmented. The looming threat of infectious disease presents humanity with a new challenge to communicate and collaborate swifter and with greater efficiency than ever before. That doesn't sound like they're trying to end the world. Okay, well, you're just reading one one of these documents. I already I, I can pull up the articles. I, I can show it to yourself. I but this it's is... It's world government controlled. They talk about a worldwide police state. You, you search the term pandemic. I'm telling you what's in these things. Okay, uh, emerging pandemics, the new century, SARS, avian flu, and swine flu. If we don't move Investigated quickly, systems to bring uh, in global it government. It seems like they're trying to prevent pandemics. If we don't us. move quickly, viruses will... Uh, by continuing our drive to invest in systems that coordinate efforts and share information, the Rockefeller Foundation is working to yeah, ensure which is the global that we government have the ability all of this. to meet the health challenges of an interconnected world. Isn't the perfect analogy terrorism? Because it's like terrorism exists. People want to prevent terrorism. But it's like, how many rights do you give up in order to do that? And then... Uh, you know, all these proactive measures that we take to prevent terrorism, a lot of them create more terrorists. So I think it's like a balance of like be, remaining a free society and dealing with a lot of these Man, problems. Man, listen, I sit here, you know, we sit here and we talk about something and whether Jamie can find it or not becomes the arbiter whether it's real. 
So they found something about an AT and T lobbying, but they didn't find the thing about this. I've got the Operation Lockstep documents where they say we're going to bring in this global authoritarian okay, but, police but state. But you have to then you have to show us those. Well, I mean, I I'm sitting here in studio talking to you about this. But I understand. I that's understand. All, that's I all understand what you're saying. But we we wanted to try to. But read you know, it. everybody else watching this is going to go look it up. Well, I hope they do. They're going to go crazy. I hope we. No, that's I good. wish we could have found it right then if it's real. No, no, no. I know you want to show it. But it might be an interpretation of mm -hmm. what they're saying, like the Whitmer no, quote. No, it says specifically. The Whitmer it, quote is just a criticism of Trump. She's b blaming all this lockdown. No, Whitmer was Trump. found by the, by the Supreme Court of Michigan and by a federal court to have seized all three branches of governments and basically set up martial law. They even use those terms. And when, she was overturned. When you say in that quote, I, I want to... When you say, if you are sick of lockdowns yes. and you're sick of not being able to go to church, Joe Biden should be elected. Agreed. That is not a huge jump from what he said. No, it's not a huge yeah. jump. Yeah. But the problem is, the way it's being said, she was talking about how bad Trump handled the the rate of infection first. Of course. And that's- All right, well, let's expand sure. on that. I remember like interviewing Lou Dobbs like 15 years ago, back when he was still on CNN, and we were looking at documents where it said- we're going to bring in global government, the North American Union, using the threat of viruses, migration flows, and economic collapse. And they said, like a deadly flu or a deadly SARS. Yeah. I I'm sitting here watching this power grab, watching the UN and, 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 and big tech saying, well, you can't say that, that the UN's wrong because the UN's in charge. Since when is the news, WHO, and all these doctors, all these medical doctors that come out and say other things other than them, like how steroids cured it or you know how hydroxychloroquine helped it, how are they being banned? Even if they were wrong, they should be have their license removed. That's what that's about. It's not Google decides that if something isn't the UN, it's taken down. That's all I'm saying. Well, the, it is a problem that they're deciding which doctors to listen to and which doctors not to when there is some real controversy as to how to handle the virus, virus with treatment. Right. What treatment is effective and what isn't effective. Yeah. Now, it turns out there's a lot of doctors that think that hydroxychloroquine isn't effective. There's a, a lot of there's some doctors that thought it was, and they think that a combination of zinc and hydro. But the, the the problem is the people that are deciding what gets taken down or not get that's a getting huge taken problem. Down. And the problem is that the doctors who go, well, we think that, you know, it's like there's we we've minimized the voices of the people that are saying one thing, right? And we've elevated the voices of the people that are saying another thing, and it's like. That becomes the real issue. Whether people like Trump, there's there's stuff to criticize about Trump. We all know that. And in their, but in their defense, yeah. they're doing it because they think that people are going to do something foolish and they're going to go out and spread the virus further. Because well, it's of not that. the media's job, though. To this is the problem. I think the media has taken on this really activist role, where they are now worse. It's not the it's media. Worse. Yeah. Social media. Social, Social media, media companies. Too, yeah. Not not even necessarily the media. Well, where you have like legitimate journalists that are taking Will on Trump this role. Do do you think he would do something in a second term about social media? I think he certainly is going to do something. He has Why hasn't to he because, done something already? Because it's so complex. Because they'll claim it's election meddling, even though they're doing that at the same time. What we have is multinational corporations acting in tandem that are already making the nation state obsolete. They're creating a information warfare. Uh, monopoly and they're censoring people and using that power they have and we just sit here denying it's going on until it's too late i mean it's it's it's, it's a really serious situation and it is cra it is a crazy situation where all of these tech companies all lean left all of them yeah they do they, yeah. they lean left and they support like there's there's no tech companies that are out there supporting donald trump there's no tech companies. Well, what's very interesting is these tech companies are very wealthy people, right? right? They're insanely wealthy. But David Pakman had a really good point about yeah. that. That they like when it comes to their financial dealings, they they're, uh, they're very conservative. They're very libertarian and conservative. Oh, they don't yeah. pay taxes. Right. I mean, Google pays almost taxes. What I'm telling you, does Apple complain about Chinese slave factories in China? No. It, it's just what I'm telling you is it's all BS. And when you study what they're doing, I can sit on my phone and pull it up. They talk about in lockstep bringing in a global authoritarian system. They talk about riots. They talk about war. If they, you can find that article, there are, send listen, it to Jamie. I found, Jamie got something? I, yeah. I found something, but I don't, I'm trying to understand even what it's saying because it's, it's, like, it's speaking about years in the future as though they've already happened. Well, we're not too far well, away see from... It. Let's see it. Yeah, because like, they're archive. painting another scenario just like they painted on, with that uh, infection scenario. Archive.org, I found. Like, okay. I went to the second page of this link, but this is like scenario narratives. It says lockstep. Mm -hmm. It talks about uh, pandemics from 2012 and the SARS and all sorts of 
H1N1. So I skipped into the next page just to, while you guys were talking. And this is the part that, that's a little strange, which is getting to, into what I think he is now talking Where is that? About. Can you highlight um, it? It started here because it says something about Kenya in 2025 and people being weary of top-down Okay, by 2025, people seem to be growing weary of so much top-down control and letting leaders and authorities make choices for them. Whatever na wherever national interest clashed with individual interest, there was conflict. Sporadic pushback becomes increasingly organized and coordinated as disaffected youth and people who have seen their status and opportunities slip away, largely in developing countries, incited civil unrest. By 2026, protesters in Nigeria brought down the government, fed up with the entrenched cronyism and corruption. Even those who liked the greater stability and predictability of this world began to grow uncomfortable and constrained by so many tight rules and by the strictness of national boundaries. The feeling lingered that sooner or later something would ine inevitably upset the neat order that the world's governments had worked so hard to establish. Okay, I never read that, but that's the other stuff. It's in there. I'm telling it's thousands of pages, man. Okay. It talks about global police state and worldwide riots and I mean, we're not that far away. There's it's weird people that the are way saying, they're writing that. Yeah. They're they're writing it almost like I, it's I, like, I haven't yeah, I have never the, seen that yeah. part. He it's just, like uh, it's but I'm just saying it says stuff like that. But well, that's, listen, look that at the idea is like the EU, right? It's a supranational financial architecture. People are saying that borders are racist. People are saying that the idea of America is racist. The country is, you know, is the idea of a country or a nation state is racist. There is this growing uh, idea or ideology that global governance is a good thing or that nation states are, you know, exclusionary. Well, it comes down racist. to this. It's yeah. not that nation states are perfect. Multinational right. corporations are bigger and operate in many cases more powerfully than governments. Correct, yeah. And so they want control, and they say they want control, and they're going to use racial differences between two countries to play them off against each other, and they're going to use global crises to centralize global control. And that's what they say in these white papers is the corporations are using this for global control, and there will be rebellions against it. That's what I read And then people in the have documents. more loyalty to multinational corporations and more loyalty. They have more in common with people that live in London or Davos or Switzerland than they do to their they're American citizens, and that that becomes the problem. But you've got Google and Facebook executives on jumbo jets and mansions telling us we've got to lower our carbon footprint and be poor. They're hypocrites. It doesn't hold water. Yeah. Well, how do we get out of there this? There it is. Authoritarian capitalism. I mean, I, I remember, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I was reading the lockstep Rockefeller documents, and they predicted worldwide police state, uh, authoritarianism, civil war. I mean, it was, they're predicting in 2018. It says, will Africa embrace, uh, will Africa's embrace of authoritarian capitalism a la China continue? And then Vietnam to require a solar panel in every home in 2022. And then in 2025. Yeah, that's not the same documents I saw, but, that, but that's the question is. It's weird the way they're writing this. They're, they're writing this as if they're, they're, they're predicting. Already happened. Yeah, they, they, well, they're they're talking about it like they're they're seeing the future and like almost like it's fiction. But they're Joe, talking about it like it's here's an Trump yeah. saying yeah. we're not going to control the pandemic. You don't. You get used to it. You get over it. You fight it with nutraceuticals. You fight it with you know with with therapeutics. It's the idea that when Bill Gates came out two weeks ago and he goes, "We'll be shut down for ten years." Is until, that what he said? He said, "Yeah." Wow. He said, "This this goes on for ten years until there's not one Corona case." Well, they picked the perfect. The wow. perfect problem they can never defeat. But isn't that crazy? Like you see a guy like Jamie who literally kicked it in a day, and they're saying we're going to close down the world for ten days. Well, so, 10 so years. like the war on terror is still going on. I mean, yeah, they yeah, want to I mean, exactly. They know. want a problem that never goes away. Yeah, it's never going to. I mean, the Cold War went on forever. I mean, this is just they like these things. So, but we've entered into three hours in here, or two and a half hours in here. We've entered into this w weird spot. We're like, okay, what could be? Where you're going to drink whiskey? <laughs> yeah. All right, I've already been done? invited election night. I'm here. What could be done? Um, what can be done? Man, all I know is I try to tell the truth. I make mistakes. But I'm sitting here with these notes I've written where I read what globalists say. I gave you that Wall Street Journal article where they go, we're, in, we're impure that we can get sick. It's time to get rid of all humans and merge with machines. It's so beautiful. I think, well, that's just one kook. And then it's almost all these people. And really, they're just trying to convince the public to all roll over and die. But, but wait a minute. That, isn't that a provocative article by a journalist who's trying to paint a, a rosy picture of our symbiotic relationship with technology? I mean, when someone's saying, like, I mean, literally saying, 
looking forward to the end of humanity. That's a, it's a provocative article. It's like, but that's the nihilistic attitude these people actually pick up. I mean, yes, it is, but it's also sort of this inevitable. If you extrapolate from where we are now with technology to where we're going to be in 20, 30 years, and when you look at things like Neuralink and you look at a lot of this uh, t technology that they're they're coming up with but that, we're that talking enhances. about big tech censoring us i don't want to plugged into my goddamn brain yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably it's, a bad it's a idea it's, it yeah. seems like a bad idea to have them invade your body well when you're talking about centralized power like that it yeah. is a bad it's idea. not a good idea it's a bad idea to give them all power i'm saying is speech. joe and i'm glad you're idea. here i'm glad you're here I, I'm very excited to be here tonight. I really appreciate you. We have to get people to debate the fact that there's people, engineers and technocrats, choosing their course and that the public is not involved in deciding that course. Well, I, I hope people are starting to understand when you see the White House press secretary get banned from Twitter, when you see the New York Post links get banned from Twitter. They, I, I hope people are starting to understand that giving people power, giving large groups power over whether it's national discourse, whether it's policy, any of these these things, yeah. it's bad. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. It's exactly. A bad idea. You don't want to give Alex fathers, Jones power. Whatever. The founding fathers, although they didn't predict technology, they didn't right. predict the internet, they did predict what happens when you give human beings ultimate power. Right. I mean, Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Yeah. So, so is, Joe, you just said it, so let me ask this question. Cause see, see this, you got a huge audience. We can really change the world right now. I think we've done a good. No one's listening. No, they're listening. There's no one. If listening. you want to change the world, you go on Alyssa Milano's show. That's the show. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, no. I people, only get three times as many listeners as her. People that are zombies don't don't matter. I'm sorry about being mean. <laughs> I'm sure she won't take zombie. No, but let me tell you, the I big, don't think zombies. Did you guys nice hear what I said? Say yeah. yeah. Listen, you can look at Tony Podesta or John Podesta and laugh at them. They run the Democratic Party. It came out two months ago in the New York Times bragging that they were in the meeting when they were wargaming on thousands of people listening on a telephone call. And they go, we're not going to concede and we're going to have the country break up and we're going to have secession and we're going to call for the U.N. to invade America. How <laughs> fucked up would it be if you like, all this stuff actually comes true the if way you're happens, describing it? this happens, this will be fucking insane. I have to use the, it. Can go, I use yeah, a bathroom? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But when people are talking about, be careful with that, that camera. Don't bump that camera. But I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying they're saying it. Because if it doesn't happen, I'll be glad. But they're like, oh, you know, Jones is saying this is happening. No, I know you will be glad. <laughs> they're literally but, saying this. But if this, this does happen... This like this podcast can be heavily criticized, right? We we are all aware of this. But when we knew that coming in, but when this goes down, if this goes down the way you're describing it, how eerie would this be? Well, I don't. I, it would be very eerie. Eerie. It would be very scary because I mean, let me tell you, like this is what they're saying they're going to do. Now I hope they don't do it, but they are saying that they're going to contest the election when they lose, and if Trump tries to declare it. Big tech has implemented this AI system that's going to block hundreds of millions of Americans from being able to say Trump won election night. Yeah. And so that's why election night is so spectacular. And some people can say, well, there's never been voter fraud before. Or voter fraud has been so minuscule in the past. That is true. But however, the ability to vote by mail in advance never really existed like it exists exactly. now. Exactly. 80 the, million mass... ballots put out there. 80 million ballots put out there as a total wild card. So who is counting all these ballots? It's the locales. It's whoever grabs them. It's whoever puts in the false names. There's been a bunch of people arrested. For... Right, but if you're, say, if you're in a democratically controlled state, and you, so who is controlling and counting those those ballots? Brian Redman. He's a good guy. He'll tell us the truth. Brian, get over here real quick. He's going for two minutes. Okay. We need Brian. No, I mean, seriously, I don't know what's going to happen, Joe. I know the Democrat chief strategist says, we're going to contest the election. We're going to break the country up like Civil War 1862, and we're going to do all this, and we're going to say oh. that... Go ahead. They found so, water on the moon. Oh, bye. Awesome. <laughs> They did find water on the moon. <laughs> you know, six months before they said that, Buzz Aldrin called me up. And he said there's water on the moon? And he goes, we, they're going to crash an Indian probe in there. It's like, not, you know, 2007 or something. They're going to crash an Indian probe on the moon. But I want you to know we already crashed one. They're going to find the water. I was like, thank you, Buzz Aldrin. So the, the, he called you up? Yep. Does Buzz call you often? No, he's called me like three times. 
Are you ever shocked? Are you like, is, he's like, it's Alex's buzz. Well, it actually, it actually got like 20 million views yeah. before they took it off YouTube. He was on the show one time and he goes, my secretary really likes you. On oh, He goes, is she a hottie or lucky? She, I'm doing this. I'm like, well, yes, sir. And he goes, there is the moon of Mars that is where the real obelisk is, 2001. And the aliens created the pyramids. And I just wanted to tell you, Alex, you got a good What? F- he said the aliens created the pyramids? Yeah, and there was an Buzz, obelisk on Buzz, Mars. I heard that listening? part. Yeah. That's not as shocking. The the Buzz, Buzz Aldrin said the aliens created the pyramids? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I was contacted by Buzz Aldrin's secretary. And okay. I swear, I'm not making this up. This is real. I don't believe you are. And, and, and so it's like, whatever this was, like 12 years ago, whatever, 10 years ago, whatever it was. Like, hey, Buzz Aldrin wants to come on. So we checked his Buzz Aldrin. He wants to talk about his new book. And once he gets on, he goes... It is the soul moon Choron or whatever it's called. Look up the moon of moon of I want off memory if somebody get this stuff wrong sometimes of Mars. And he goes, That is where the true obelisk is, and that will give us the data tapes to go to the next level. And and I just wanted you to know that because you're a good person, that the pyramids were created by aliens and we're doing important work. There he is. Buzz Aldrin admits aliens built the pyramids and Phobos monument. Oh, the the uh monument. Yeah, he said it after he talked to me on C SPAN, yeah. And so he Phobos, said it? He yeah, really he, said he aliens did, built sw- the pyramids? I swear to God. This guy really went off the reservation. Like, you think NASA's, like, doing a better vetting process now? Because this guy well, really... It's, you know, he's had tough times. Well, he just yeah. endorsed Trump. Oh, did he? Why did he endorse Trump? All the military endorsed Trump. All the police unions But listen, I'm not Trump. bragging. I don't know why. I thought he had him on about a book he wrote. Mm-hmm. He starts telling me about aliens, the pyramids, and the freaking... Let me ask you this. What did you think about the Pentagon saying recently that they've recovered crafts that are not of this world? I think it's probably true. I think it's probably true as well. I, I think we're like the ditch, like a movie theater. Or when like, I talk to... Uh, there's stuff in the ditch. Like, yeah. When I talk to Commander Fravor, um, who is the guy who saw that uh, the Tic Tac UFO off the coast of San Diego, the way he describes it and the, the video footage that they got of this thing... And his his take on it is fucking chilling. Yeah. I mean, that thing went from sixty thousand feet above Tic Tac. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a Tic Tac. Like that's a Joe's new code name. Was Tic Tac? I thought it was a Tic Tac oh. UFO. Like, no, no, no. What? Yeah, you look, it's, a, it's a huge problem. Like, no, it's this little Tic Tac thing there. Yeah. In the house. And what did he say about it? Yeah. He said that this thing went from sixty thousand feet above sea level to one inside of a second. Wow. He said it d- defied propulsion. By any but any understanding that we have of physics, the way it moved was insane. It it, it was actively blocking tracking systems, which is an act of war. He That's nothing they do is they block all the radar. Yeah. I, you could listen to him on my podcast, but I would actually recommend you listen to him on Lex Friedman's podcast. It's available on YouTube, and Lex does an amazing job of of talking to him and breaking down. Let's the, do the that, Joe. Aspects. What do you think the universe is? What do you think? Let's talk real. What's the secret of the is. universe? Totally legit report says Buzz Aldrin saw aliens when he was up in space. That's sarcasm. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not Joe, totally is that you legit. in the photo? They said that no. he tried. He, I don't look like that. How somebody reached you? out to his people and they said that it's bogus and we don't know where it came from. It's bogus. We don't know where it well, came from. Well, he came on my show and said that. The so, pyramid thing? Yeah, the pyramid yeah. quote? He <laughs> yeah. said it's bogus? The UFO yeah. Thing. Well, maybe they pulled him aside. But Joe, let's, get, let's have fun here. Lay off Everybody's the watching. It's an epic podcast. Part three, Joe Rogan. <sighs> I want to know. So what is what? What do you think runs the universe? What do you think the secret is? Who are the DMT elves? When's the last time you took DMT? It's been a couple of years. Um, I don't think that there is any doubt that there's other life out there. It's a matter of uh, if it contacts us regularly, whether or not it's contacted us, or why it comes and why it visits. Or uh, Jacques Vallée, I believe, th- I think his perception is not that they're from another planet, but that that would be probably the least spectacular answer and that they could be interdimensional travelers. Some people believe that they're time travel. And Jacques Vallée is the guy who, uh, Steven Spielberg, he modeled that French scientist in Close Encounters of the Third yeah. Kind after yeah. him. He's a really, really interesting guy. And he's well, that's what I personally believe is it's interdimensional. It could be that. It could be that our understanding of reality itself is very limited. It's like... You know, if you wave your hand ab- above certain insects, they have no idea you're even there, right? They don't, they lack the ability to detect it. That we we have senses that we assume are the only senses that are available, and it is entirely likely that there are many dimensions that we don't have access to. 
right? And this is the quantum physicists and all, all those guys that write the shit on yellow legal pads that you don't understand. They they all believe there's many many dimensions outside. Well, there's no of doubt to that. that we're so that's where I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think the universe is insanely huge, and they're finding life compatible planets on a daily basis there's hundreds of them now so i agree with you let me ask this question then what do we do about this corrupt political elite trying to make us look at them well, and follow them my how do we break free of them well no, that's a different thing of the universe but my question is like why are they telling us now that they've acquired these ships or that they 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 have access to these things or that they know these things are real you know um bob lazar has basically d been describing exactly that and exactly the same way since 1989, when uh, when he was uh, first hiding, uh, when he was on uh, George Knapp's uh, television show in Vegas, and they had him out only as a silhouette. And then he eventually came out and said that he was a propulsion expert that was brought to Area S4, and they've tried to discredit him, and they've tried to talk... but. One of the things that he said was he talked about Element 115 and that this was something that they used to propel these crafts and it was something that it can it could change gravity, can bend gravity and propel itself in a way that is not like any propulsion system that we use now, which essentially you have to push something out the back to make it go forward, whether it's flames or you know a, a rocket or anything else, like even a, a, an airplane, right? It propels things forward. And what he was saying is that what this element 115 is allowing them to do is to somehow or another bend space and time somehow or another bend gravity they Fold don't space. but they don't know how it works they don't know what what it's doing but well, let's they know talk about it, it this operates on this element let's talk about this hold on they know it operates on this element that was only theoretical until t i think it was 2000 13 or 2015 they used a particle collider and they 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 detected it and then actual element 115 that it was actually real and that's what the superconducting super colliders are for <clears throat> well i mean they're, they're for detecting many things cyclotrons right? well the, these particle colliders are for detecting many different things that are theoretical and they they find these things to be true and then it becomes you know uh, scientific record w what i think is that we are apes we are these weird talking apes that are at a, in an adolescent stage of technological evolution and what we might be looking at when we see these these uh, tic tac UFOs and other things, we might be looking at something from the future. We might be looking at time travelers. We might might be looking at something that comes back and well, visits Joe, I us. think that's I think that's a good approximation. But we're a little bit beyond just apes. Clearly, we're from outside the planet, and there's something bigger going on. Like this this life forms happened before. This is a major test. And so we can sit there and just say, oh, we're just apes. No, I don't mean that. What I mean by we're just apes is that in comparison to what we could be eventually through evolution. You're saying we're in a metamorphosis. Little... Yeah, we're, we're, we're on a, 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 look, we're a lot smarter than apes, right? Than regular apes that are in, Most the, of us. in, in the zoo. Yeah. Or in, well, in some of the, the public's jungle. dumber than apes. Yeah. Right. I was about to say, let's some of them are dumber. paint with a broad brush. But we're nowhere near where our potential lies, right. right? Our potential lies far, far, far in advance of what we are currently. And I think some of this happens has to do with some of these uh, symbiotic technologies that we're talking about, like Neuralink and a lot of these things that are, are being proposed that are eventually going to find their way into the human body and accelerate, I agree, but it's, but are they accelerate gonna censor our ability. Our, are they going to censor our ability? Well, see, because we, we're already growing, and all I see from big tech is censorship. So is the Neuralink going to censor what I do? Well, the, oh, you it'll know, plug in and make me feel great and hit my pleasure centers. Well, when but, you're talking about human emotions and greed and power and all these different things, these are all biological issues that we have that the idea is will be transcended if you could somehow if you believe the big tech these... lords aren't like us they're they're us though so they're in charge of the same thing that we already are so to say oh big tech lords are going to take us away from our human problems right but do you understand transcend sin they're going to make it worse okay but do you understand that they didn't understand what technology was going to create when it created the internet the uh, the ability no, to I distribute totally agree. information. The establishment doesn't the know what they're the doing. ability to distribute information that existed pre nineteen ninety whatever when the internet became uh, mainstream 
it was very, very, very different than it is today. And it's very hard to get away with the things you could get away with in the early eight, 1980s. What, right. they, what they can do now in terms of a regular person and their ability to transmit information, to access information, it's uh, m- All multitudes. All I'm saying is the controllers. And giant leaps. I get it. More the powerful. technology's there. I'm not against the technology. It's those that introduce it to us and they control how it's deployed. I understand. That's I understand. the big issue. But Everything the, the is about is, that. What I was trying to get to is the way information has gotten out of their hands and you can distribute it in a way that they never anticipated. If they did anticipate it, I guarantee you they would have never let the internet No, I agree. Free. I used to complain. I think that yeah. same thing is going to happen with all other technologies. And if that's the case, technology may be our only hope. You technology just, may be the it. only thing that saves us from all of these human emotions, the, the, the need for power and greed and control. The, the one thing that might save us from that is the symbiotic relationship with technology where we connect to things that will alleviate a lot of the problems but of Joe, evolution. Joe, if that technology... I don't, I'm not saying this is good or I'm bad. I'm not saying you're wrong. Can I say something? Yeah. You're, you're doing really good. This is great rants. Best Joe Rogan I've ever seen. I'm not being patronizing. It's good stuff. It's okay. You're drunk. No, no. I'm saying this is powerful. Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> what I'm saying is... There's outside groups trying to program that. So you can't project your own goodness onto this. I'm not saying even goodness. I'm saying... No, the- I'm, what I'm saying is, you've been ranting for five minutes, and I'm, I'm just going to just say, I get what you're saying. It's just that you're sitting there saying, this will free us from our problems, but it's still humans that program the nexus points of it so it could actually amplify the problems. I'm saying we should be wary of all of it. Oh, it certainly could. Look, it could go sideways. It could all go bad. But it also could go to a point where people don't feel the need to do that anymore. And that we recognize that a lot of what we have is we, we are escaping the shackles of our monkey bodies. Oh, if we're uh, – our monkey bodies. Yeah. So if we're silicon and have don't need resources anymore, we can just be spiritual – and then we'll be able to free ourselves and not hurt the earth Maybe anymore. Hop in that Tic Tac and fly to Alpha Centauri in the blink of an eye. So Bink. we need to. We need to uh, no, I already seen the transmission. If you could have a spaceship that would allow you to go anywhere in the galaxy, would you be willing to give up any of your emotions for that? No, I know that. I know that. I know the digital deal. Give up your body for the silicon gods. And become a god. This is all fun and games, but like, no, we're not even. I mean, in California, we're not even allowed to go to Applebee's. So let's stop <laughs> with the spaceship. Let's just try to get. I, I'm not allowed to leave my fucking. I want to go to the comedy store. Yeah, I mean, let, okay, we'll get a spaceship hey. eventually. Yeah. Let's get a few rides. I already got back your first. thing. I'm coming here election night. You're you drinking know? with me. Election Wild. night. Election Top night. Top ratings. Baby. 25 billion Stop. viewers. Listen, you invited yourself to this. I think you should settle down. We need aliens. <laughs> you told me we I'm already, coming. No, you invited yourself. We already got it. It's not coming. No, I said you could come in for a little bit, but you're you're making it the Alex Jones show. No, I'm not. It's a bit of an issue. This is like election special. It's a bit of an issue. Apple juice. It's a bit of an issue. Settle down. It's a bit of an issue? It's going to be a fun uh, fun experience. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. But no, quit being so mean. <laughs> you, you, you literally. Am I being mean? No, no, no. I think Joe wants to beat my ass right now. No, I don't. Listen, Alex, I love you. But what I'm saying, and I'm not even disagreeing with you, I'm saying that I think when you, we're talking about aliens and we're talking about life forms from out of space and space travel and shit, the big, when the you big see issues them, of the election, you see those fucking things like the we're iconic aliens. Bunnies? They all have big yeah. heads. Yeah, the grays, the little grays. tiny muscleless bodies, shaved grays. heads, yeah. shaved heads. Yeah, yeah. they've Cheetos. all like you. escaped. They've you're, escaped all of the. You're the actually an alien. That make yeah. us. They look like what we're going to be. Yeah, but who wants to be that? I don't want to be that right now. I mean, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm with you. I like being a person. Right. I think we should be humans for as long as we can. What do you think aliens are? There are all sorts of interdimensional forces in the universe and multi-dimensions. So there's like bad aliens that are trying to manipulate our development. Gretchen Whitmer. Because a high level, (laughs) exactly, a high level would not try to manipulate our development. Right. Okay, so so Joe is like imprinting on these demons because he loves them. He's a bad person, I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, seriously. So all I'm saying is is we need to build towards the next level 
and do amazing things. What do you think of the? What do you think of? The and theory? I did invite myself on the election show. Please, I, it's going to be great. I, I got on my news in front of Joe. It's great. I'll do Listen, it again right now. But what do you? I'll get on my news right now. Stop making it about you. No, what, it is what, about me. I'm I'm front of Ganesh. What, you're drunk. I want to come on. We're yes, gonna, like, ban you from alcohol. What do I you, want? To, you're going to smoke weed with me. What do you think about? We're going to have I will a party. definitely do that on November I'll be here two minutes. What do you think the about the theory? Did. What do you think about the theory that human beings are the product of, of accelerated evolution? That they came down here and they genetically manipulated lower hominids and they created human beings. There's the, listen. I already have a genetic memory. I already told you all this. I mean, I already. <laughs> you have a genetic memory? Yes, that's epigenetics. Yeah. Okay. So I have a genetic. You have a genetic memory. Right. I have a genetic memory, and I have a genetic memory that weren't, you know, I have a bunch of memories. It's like you go watch Star Wars. Like, I've done this before. This looks totally normal. We're in the universe. We're in the planets. We're here. Our life forms have been all over the place, like little seeds that jump from planet to planet, like blowing through the space winds. So, yeah, we've already been here before. Because this is one of the things that Lazar brought up that they discussed with him at Area S4. They said that they believe that human beings are the product of accelerated evolution. It's like, And he wasn't sure if they were fucking with him. Like when he was reading all that stuff, right. he's like, is this like disinformation? That no, they, they weren't me? fucking with him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, God doesn't know where God came from. Whoa. And we said that last time. That's heavy. And this we is... don't know where we came from. Right. But we have the archetypal memories that goes so far. And then we, our big fear is have an evolutionary death of the, the species. It's like a line of, you know, flowers or plants or, you know, whatever we are. And it's it's a whole genetic experience. We're conscious individuals, but then we have a genetic experience that goes on forever as long as the line of the genetic experience doesn't die. So we're always looking for eternal life. As long as we keep having kids, they have kids, we live forever. That's us. We just get better. Well, as long as the Earth doesn't experience a massive extinction event. But, but that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. we go interplanetary. That's, well, so yeah. the main mission November is November third. Well, seventy nine days. Seventy nine days of chaos. And then I am endorsing Joe Biden right now. Here on Earth. I'm, <laughs> vote, I'm voting for. Kanye. By the way, that might be a good strategy if you endorse Joe Biden right now. I'm going to go with my history of yeah. voting for people that have been on the podcast. So I'm going to vote for Kanye. I'm going with Joe Jorgensen because I like to back a winner. Am I sitting in the same seat as Kanye? Yes, you are. All right, I'm fulfilled. Yeah. It's the best. All right. But before this goes any further off the rails, I think we're good. We've done it. Oh, you want to end this transmission? Do you? I never got to all my notes. You got more shit? You what got else I, would you like to talk about? I got about? more shit than you can fucking imagine here. You got to come back. <laughs> you got to come back November 3rd. You got to have no, guys no. wheeling Joe documents. <laughs> Just wheeling no, documents. Joe said, it. Joe said He's like, you're the one inviting yourself November 3rd. You oh, did. you're coming. You certainly did. I waited like... Uh, you That's invited like yourself. 19 months or something. To be. Was yeah. fine. Alex, if I showed you the list of people that are trying to get on this fucking show, it would make your head spin. I know, yeah. but it's I live so... down the street. I understand. I don't care. You don't want me no, 30 listen, minutes on election just, night? We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. But I'm just I saying. I'm going to survive I, without it. I'm it's fine. very difficult for me to manage a fucking small fraction of the number of people that are trying yeah. to get on. Well, this is an epic podcast. Yeah. We've only we got to go another hour. It is. Oh, it God. is. Like another last hour. time. We'll be dead. I'm this hour. Going another this hour. is going to be bigger than the Elon Musk. That's the uh, I'm a it second. Doesn't have to be man. I'm the second like biggest that. podcast. You can't be competitive. Every listener has to spread this link right now, <laughs> or I'm gonna die. Well, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wrote notes for you. Let me read these notes to you. Yes, please do. Please. Do. Okay. Okay. Right, What's nice. important? Major goals to accomplish. <laughs> how the president could invoke martial law. You handed this to me. I don't yeah. even know how he did. It's like a magic trick. Yeah. All of a sudden, this is in front of my hands. I don't even remember it getting law. here. I don't remember me having. Well, these are big, important topics. Highlighted. Do you drive around with this just in the car? No, he's actually oh. done research to prepare for this show. No, I know I did a lot don't, of don't don't I, research. Shame and then him. I was like, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> and we're already here. How we're many talking hours? about heavy I, I shit. I just wish this was six days from now, so I could. Be How many drunk hours are we into this? We're three, three hours in. We're three in. Yeah. If we don't break the last record, we're going down. What's the last record? No, we don't have to break records. No, Tim Dillon, don't you rant while I get ready. <laughs> Give us your latest comedy. I love Joe. Like it's true. Oh. I was like literally on my knees. Like Joe, can I please come under the election? Listen, we're he gonna goes, be fine. He Let's said, not yes. talk about that. And he, he like slapped we're me. Good. He goes, we're good. He literally punched me in the nose. He goes, mm. I didn't do that. And I, I grovel on the none ground. Of that, none of that happened. But but tell me, go over your notes, and Tim and I will talk. 
Is this everything that you hoped it would be? This is my version of a -a Make-A-Wish kid going to Disney World. (laughs) Uh, This is the greatest thing I've ever done is to sit here. I've watched Alex since I'm 13 years old, uh, pre-9-11, when he was ranting about the WTO. And uh, I followed him through 9-11, through Bohemian Grove, all the big events of my childhood. And uh, just it's big to be here. Can I say I'm very impressed with your knowledge? Like You know a lot of this stuff. Well, I I didn't go to college, so you have a lot of time. You have a lot of time if you don't go to college. You can. I'm self-educated. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There's a lot of information that you yeah, have. The important at your stuff. Disposal. Yeah. You got some notes. I like how your new studio is like a <laughs> like a colon. Listen, this new studio came together in just a few weeks. We really didn't know what to I'm do. I'm not putting I had it down. This room. We banged it out real quick. But this is going to be known as the colon. Um. The some red people pill. call people it the, the red, red pill. pill. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, Radio Raheem. Oh, my God. He, this is the Red Pill. He called it the Red Pill. So this is a very yeah. rare studio. You're, you're getting a new one ready, I know. Yeah. We're, well, we're having problems finding a good location. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have How a How about one. my house? <laughs> 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 I got a huge area. <laughs> we're going to find a good spot. It's amazing. We're, we're looking right now. We're in the process. All right. Let's get serious. Okay. Oh, I covered a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, we're good, man. We're good. No, we have to go for another two hours. But we're going <laughs> to see hours. you again in a week. Oh, you so I am, on the, I am on the nightly list. Relax. relax yeah. Here. I have to beg. How about yeah. I just beg a little bit? You don't have, come on, man. I'm Is not below blaming. Else? Is there anything else you really want to discuss? No, I mean, I'm glad that Jamie is better than I am at searching the internet. I'm not kissing his ass, but I'm really good at it. He's better than I am, which is almost no one is. He does it with one hand. The problem is I remember all this stuff. Now, most of the time it's accurate. Sometimes it's not. But, I mean, if I'm saying something, I believe I saw it or I did it. One thing that was in there, I I didn't want to correct earlier, but uh, the year you were talking about something, you kept saying 1963, and then they went to, like, 82 or whatever. That happened in 73. That uh, group wasn't even... Around yet the the something of Rome, Club of Rome. Yeah, that was that wasn't even created until sixty eight. So just for clarification purposes. Okay, cool. I think they had out. a subgroup earlier than that. Mm. Tim, but I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. Well, who knows? But Jamie's com- I mean, he has George Soros COVID. This is a compromised Google, individual. Google might have compromised you know? the the records. Right. Oh, that's another thing I want to say. Can I say? Oh, yeah. This is the most important thing we said tonight. We said a lot of important things, but both of you are not drinking. Yes. So you don't know. Right. But this is it right now. Okay. mRNA vaccines. Yeah. So when you think about a regular vaccine, goes in, it's a broken bacteria, a broken virus, it's defeated, your body learns how to kick its ass. It's like a dummy. It's like having an attack dog trained on a dummy. Right. The T lymphocyte, white blood cell, it's like a big badass Mike Tyson, it learns how to defeat it. MRNA vaccines go into your cells as a virus. They're viruses. So it's a virus they inject you with that reprograms your cell to then have a certain response to things and release proteins, which is what cancer does. And so they admit on the news that 100% of people that take these are getting sick. 20% are going to um, the hospital. And so they also have vaccines that are called behavior modification vaccines. You can type it in. Okay, but let me pause right there mRNA vaccines, you said 100% of them get sick and 20% of them go to the hospital. They, they had two studies. Uh, in one study, 100% got sick, 20% went to the hospital. Another study, 80% got sick, and of those, 20% went to the hospital. That's CBS News. You can type okay. in... Jamie's going to find that right now. You can because... type in Bill Gates grilled over over vaccine dangers. You'll have CBS News reporting it. But the point is they admit a bunch of vaccine deaths have happened now from the test. But what was I getting to before that? So you were just talking about mRNA. Oh, vaccine. behavioral, M- yeah, behavioral M- modification. R- yeah. So, type in vaccine to cure heroin but, addiction. But, but, but we're going to get to that. But before we get to that, we got to Google the stats on mRNA vaccines because that this is going to be highly contested. So we have to find. Well, out no, you can time. I mean, I can share the clip. Bill Gates. But we we just Google the stats on mRNA. Uh, patients in well, trial. I don't even. I think they don't even have the stats on that. So how do you know it? Bill Gates was on CBS News, and he said eighty percent of the people get sick. Uh, yeah, and twenty percent of them go to the hospital. No, it was two vaccines. They said one vaccine, one hundred percent got sick, 
and a certain percent went to the hospital. The other 80% got sick. And twenty percent of those. And sometimes that does happen, even with the flu vaccine, right? Like sometimes I, people get. I swear get a to God, sick. you type in Bill Gates grilled by CBS. I'll bring it up. Right. Certain vaccines do get people a little. Well, bit we sick, had that right? conversation about the whole thing in India. You know, he introduced a lot of vaccines in India. There was some negative reactions to them. I mean, that's what happens. It's just you know a lot of people. Joe, I sent you, you know, the article. At mRNA vaccines, I sent you the article about. <clears throat> um, AP about the majority of new polio cases are the Bill Gates vaccine. You went. We'll get to that too. Let me see if Jamie can find this mRNA thing. I don't know how to find it, really. Um, you know, you don't have a Morton's next door here. mRNA. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look it up, but I'm like, are we going to go steak or are we going to go barbecue? Bar? I'm just finding yes, lots barbecue. of articles. No, no steaks? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get it's a steak. Hammer. I want to st- <laughs> look at his hammer. He was making a point about vaccines, and now we're at stake. I am not hammered at all. <laughs> I've been drinking orange juice. <clears throat> you polished off a half a bottle of orange juice. Um, uh, Joe, I'm just telling you have fun. I'm I'm happy you're here. Legitimately, um, so if you can't find that, the behavioral Google, modification vaccine. What is it you want to find? Bill Gates polio vaccine causes of polio. AP. AP. AP.com. Uh, the headline, the exact headline is. Why does everybody hate Bill Gates? What is going on? Because he's so sexy. I, I don't think people hate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, like, it, 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 was, it, it, it was like AP. Uh, you, Bill Gates you, did not say 700,000 people have negative side effects. He did say that. My God, he said it on that. He said it on NBC News. Bill Gates did not say 700,000 people have negative side effects from a coronavirus vaccine. I have the video Look, of that. Okay, but pull, pull up AP Bill Gates polio vaccine. But that's a coronavirus. Uh, he said polio vaccine. All right. Oh, all okay. Right. Now, I'm, now I'm pissed. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you the headline. It was... Uh, um, was the see exact... if there's a polio... Hold on. What was the headline? Article. It was uh, UN. UN vaccine causes polio. UN vaccine causes polio. Okay. <clears throat> UN vaccine causes polio. Google you know, is not going to show October, you this sober October. Google is compromised. <clears throat> Can you use Ask Jeeves, Look at this. please? UN says new polio outbreak in Sudan was caused by oral vaccine. Yeah. Whoa. It's not good. New polio outbreak in Sudan is caused by oral vaccine. And this, look at that kid's face. Oh my God. Is that a terrifying image? The image of them distributing that. Look at that poor kid's face. Imagine that kid getting polio from that vaccine. They're just—he looks so terrified. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean that's tragic. It's not oh. Then a bunch of them died, but you know. Jesus it's, Christ. It's just Alex Jones. The hold on, hold on. Back up, back up, back up, back up. <clears throat> what does it say up there? It said World Health Organization says a new polio outbreak in Sudan is linked to an ongoing vaccine-sparked e- epidemic in Chad. A week after the UN vaccine sparked epidemic, health agency declared the African continent free of the wild polio vaccine. World Health Organization said it found 11 additional vaccine-derived polio cases in Sudan, and that the virus had been identified in environmental samples. There are typically many more unreported cases for every confirmed polio patient. It's a whitewash, yeah. The highly infectious disease can spread quickly in contaminated water. And most often st- strikes children under five. Fuck. Jesus Christ. In rare instances, the live polio virus in the oral vaccine can mutate in a form capable of sparking new outbreaks. So let me tell you a story. My grandmother died three years ago at 92. Incredible woman. That's fucking terrifying. She was told by her doctor in 1954 when she got the second polio shot, they said, sorry, it was live. It paralyzed her. She was on crutches the rest of her life. They told her it did it to her. Jesus Christ. So, see, I just told you that. Yeah, it's true. And that's a whitewash what AP's doing. I would imagine. So, I'm telling you, I make mistakes because I can't remember all this stuff. I understand. You you remember a lot. But I'm not trying to lie. I wish, uh, The last thing I want to say is this. I'd like to retire the next year. I'd like to finish up my work, clean up the mistakes I made, talk about other stuff. Because I'm gonna die of a heart attack or going crazy. I'll do this 18 hours a day. I'd like to get you in shape. 
I'm totally stressed out, Joe. I'm dying. I know you are. I know I'm dying. You are. I literally do this stuff constantly. I, I read thousands I of articles do. a day. I know you do. If I, I text know. you at three o'clock in the morning, you respond right back. You're wide yeah. awake. Well, I'm not. I'm not a victim. I'm just telling you, I'm dying. I understand. So I can't do this much longer. And I want everybody to know. I love my crew, but I told them I can't keep running this operation. I just want to tell the truth, and I want to get out in the next year. Doesn't mean I won't go on your show once a year and do like a write a book or something. But I I'm want done. you to get healthy. I need to get healthy. I try to get healthy. Why but don't I'm you a- hire a trainer and hire a dietitian? I try. Because I know you got off the booze for quite a while, and we were talking. And you said you felt great. I did feel great. I lost how like 40 did, pounds. How long did you get off the booze for? Four months of no alcohol, about eight months, and barely any. And like the last three or four, I was right back. But you, you, you were talking to me about Adderall. You're the too. problem. You know, the I want prob- you to talk about that because that's a good thing for people to hear. The 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 problems that you had with Adderall because that that shit scares the fuck out of me. Well, I'm not gonna get into any of that type of stuff. <laughs> the point is, is that is, is that the things that doctors push, the things that go on, the whole country's drugged up on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 not good. But I'm not. I do caffeine and alcohol. And that's it. And, and and it's all very very destructive. And you know. It gets to the point where, like, you're exhausted unless you drink, and it's, and it's not a good thing. That's why I'm glad you did sober in October. Last October, I was sober. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you think you could just kick it totally? I mean, you kicked it for four months. Do you think it would be if good If I to wasn't kick it doing totally? a show every day and having to read, I mean, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I read 50 articles. I'd probably scan a 500. I mean, I, I, I look at so much stuff. That it's just, it's enslaving me. Like I, I just want to. I don't want to be around it anymore. It's not like I'm a scared of it. I'm just I, I want to be something else. It's it's negative. It has negative consequences on your health. Yeah. So so for me, I just want to get away from all of it. And what do you uh, want to do? I'd love to go hunting and fishing and hiking and, and oil painting and doing sculpture. I love metal sculpture. I love like, that's a beautiful chimpanzee skull you got right there. I mean, I just, I've done this 26, 27 years. And when you've done it that long, you want to stay in the fight, but at the same time, you want to not do it anymore. And that's the thing about people, the Democrats suing me and attacking me. Before Trump even got elected, I was already telling people, hey, I'm going to shut this company down. I can't fund all of you. I can't do this anymore. Them attacking me made me keep fighting them. Do you think that if, if you were healthier, if you maybe just, did less you you could be all right with it i I didn't do that as a stunt i mean quite honest with you i i'm I'm a smart i'm a smart i think i'm gonna die of a heart attack at like 50 something i'm 47 now and i just i just have to like there's no way to do this full time either you do it or you turn loose and i'd like to just for a few years just disappear so you think that the amount of shit that's out there and when and this is a problem with conspiracies, right? Because you keep finding more and more and more that are provable, and you, you start going crazy because you, you start really <clears throat> exactly, you can't and then sleep. And you lose who you, exactly. Like, yeah, I don't like the globalist. I'm not giving into them. I'm giving into like my own body. I understand. It's not their, like their attacks keep me fighting them. Like, like they keep thinking like, oh, let's mess with him more. He'll give up. That makes me like attack more. It's and I'm trying to like get them to top attacking me. It's not some Machiavellian thing. I'm saying. I just want to like, I don't want to be, in, I don't want to look at the news. Maybe if you just took some time off and like, it just got healthy. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you just need an extended vacation. I mean, you're, you're your own boss, right? You could do that. Do you ever think you maybe shrink the <clears throat> operation down a little bit and then you could kind of do what you want, how you want, you know, instead of, instead of just being a 24 hour day operation, you could just take it down? Well, here's my problem. Let me get personal. I mean, I had perfect teeth till like two years ago. I have to wear a, a mouth brace because I literally crushed my teeth when I was asleep. Like, I broke one just the other day. I got implants going in right here. And I'm just like literally in my sleep, clenching my teeth so hard that I've got like giant muscles. Like, I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger, but my jaws are. Right. Like, they're like, they're like a chipmunk. And it's it, because that psychologically, I'm trying to defeat all this. And it's just like, it's like a certain point, but I can't do it all. Right. So I don't feel sorry for myself. You've earned it. You've earned some time off. Yeah. Why don't you just take, take some months off? Just to, to like mark an extended hiatus, you know, whenever you feel like you could get away and just decide you're going to take three months off, put the fucking cell phone down, eat healthy, exercise. I mean, you could hire a trainer, you know, not no, a bad idea. There's nothing I want to do more than that. 
because you know what, where I'm doing the sober October thing, and where, when I've done it in the past, one of the things that we've done is these fitness challenges. You don't even realize what you can do until you're forced to do something. If you force yourself, like say, hey, for the month of uh, January, I'm not going to drink, and I'm going to exercise every day, and I'm going to put it up on you know my website and let everybody know what I'm doing, and and just force yourself to to try to get healthy. Only eat healthy food, and maybe get a dietitian, maybe get a trainer. Not even maybe. Get a dietitian. Get a trainer. Get someone who makes you uh, like meal preps for you. Gives you healthy food to eat, and this is all you're going to eat. Is this stuff? No, no processed bullshit. Just healthy food. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Just take a whole month and do nothing but that. Just leave the fucking news alone. Let this crazy world sort itself out. No, I agree because now I look at news and it's just like used to. I'm like, oh, I got them right here. Oh, this would be great. And I was like, now I'm just like, oh my god. This yeah, is because horrible. you're probably overrun. You know, it's you're probably taxed out. Your body's probably like barely hanging in there. I mean, if you're boozing a lot and you're not getting sleep and you're grinding your teeth, none of these are good signs. Now, I've been honest about it with the listeners, but you know, at the end of the day, like this is fundamental. This is an anti-human movement. It's a globalist movement, and I get people that are doing it are sociopaths that have created a cosmology to explain why they're doing all these evil things. I just I feel like it's such an important mission that it should be exposed. And I, Joe, I'm just glad you moved to Austin. I'm glad that Tim's here. I'm glad that all Tim's this moving. He just told me. Yep. I gotta save LA first, and then I want to go work with Bill and you Melinda can't, Gates you can't for a while, save LA. and then I will come to Austin. You can't save LA. I know. I know. We'll see. November third. So, Joe, what is your uh, prediction? Who uh, wins? Who uh, wins in six days? I'm not smart enough to make the prediction, but I do Trump's going to win. I think it's going to be chaos either way. It's going to be chaos. I think if Trump, I've never ever in my life felt this country more divided it feels more divided now than i've ever felt before where the the possibility of a civil war doesn't seem outside the realm of of possibilities it doesn't seem like something ridiculous it doesn't like people used to say if they said it in the past someone said that all oh, this country is on the brink of a civil war 10 years ago i'd be like listen to this crazy fuck right. but you say it now and i go like i could see it yeah when, tim why are you not moving to texas well, I, I might eventually. I might eventually. I don't know. We're gonna see. I gotta I move. Know. I gotta open a. Comedy Joe convinced club here. me that Joe told me to move to L.A. a year ago, and then I moved <laughs> and it just destroyed. Well, so the Joe pandemic. told me to move here. I might move here. No, and it'll no, be a problem. We're gonna start a comedy club out here. Yeah, we're gonna set this place up right. Well, thank you for having me. My again. pleasure. I appreciate it. I, but I appreciate you being here. It was no, everything I, I hoped yeah, it would be. Good. This was a great one, Alex. This I is think really people good. got to see a side of you that they, they maybe even didn't see in the other two podcasts. You know, I think you you did a great account of yourself, and I think this, really you think so? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the shit that you brought up today was, I mean, you were pulling shit off the top of your head, and a lot of it was accurate. A good solid percentage. Well, I'm not of trying it. to bullshit. No, you're not trying to bullshit. No, I know you're not. And this is what I've always told people about you. And and again, I think that we're at a a critical time where we've got to rethink all these people that are calling for people to be censored. And calling for people to be deplatformed. And I think you got to rethink this. I think everybody has to rethink this because you you might be looking back on this ten years from now and going, "Oh my God, what the fuck did I support?" But I agree with you. But we should. Uh, you're being nice to to the censors. They're tyrants. I think, we should hear everybody's views. I think I mean, there's a lot of people in this in this machine, and a lot of these people they're not tyrants. They think they're doing good. They really do. I think there's a lot of people that are out there calling for people to be deplatformed, calling for people to be censored because maybe they have children and they see their children being indoctrinated into QAnon and all this kind of ridiculous thinking. And maybe they, they, they think that the way to, to fight some of this shit is to just take that stuff offline so the kids have no, no access that to it. That only makes their children want it more. Well, it, it not only that, it makes the people that believe that there's a conspiracy to silence the truth, it makes them even more fervent in their beliefs. They, they start believing it even more rapidly. And not only that, it, 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 it creates echo chambers. And then well, let's again, end this positive. You are happy you move to Texas. I fucking love it here. I love the people. I love the, I love the town. I love everything about it. 
I do. But that's the good news. Yeah. And, and Tim Dillon, yeah. you come here, it, lower taxes, good people. Yeah. We want all the people from other parts of the country. Great food. To come. Good food. Food, food yeah. here's amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. And the here. kids here are in the QAnon, which I love. I think that's good. I think All the of the children should be in. Well, they QAnon get tattooed Texas. when they're in the fifth grade. <laughs> Listen, I love you, Alex Jones. Thanks for being here. I love you, Tim Dillon. Thank you for Thank having you for me. Being here. Thank you, guys. We did it. We did it. We did it. All right. What we do? Three and a half hours. Uh, something like that. Yes. Infowars. To infinity and beyond. Band.video. <laughs> Don't visit it. Band.video. Bye, everybody. Thank you.